Look, we, we can go through all the fallacies if you want. I'm an expert on fallacies. Alex. Kirby. Cameron. Matt. Welcome to the Real Game School Podcast. Here's the song of the week. On a dull Tuesday night, want a game to kill the bottom. I look over my backlog, trying to find something to play. I took my turn staring of my collection on TA, till I found something easy, and I began to play. I said, why didn't I try this? It's been sitting here for ages, knowing it was taking space on my Xbox hard drive. So now I'm working through it. Bringing down my backlog for a taste of achievements. I'll play any rattle like a... All right, so that should be a nice and easy one. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a classic, uh, and it's also uh, themed. Yeah, I'm, I'm very glad uh, I get all the easy songs on the week I'm on, and <laughs> last week when I'm not on, it was, <laughs> there was not a chance. Not a oh, chance. Oh, man, last week was... Ah, oh, man, I mean, Mad Ruckus Tansky got last week's one, which was, uh, if you're not on the Discord, it was uh, Urgent by Foreigner. Mm-hmm. But this, oh. this week's one, is there any, any takers? Uh, I know what it is. Uh, Cameron... Okay, let me have a guess on Cameron, Cameron looking go. real, like, not sure. And, like, I've, I've, I've heard it multiple times, but I just don't know the name. Tip of the tongue, mate. Okay. Um, I think it's The Gambler. Like, I think that's mm-hmm. the title. It is. Yeah. Yes, it okay. is. Okay, and it's... It's... I, I am gonna... No, I don't know the artist. I, I, like, I want to say it's... Um, I don't even remember his name. But he's in. He's in. He's a stupid old country singer in the Jukes of Hazard. But it's probably not him, is it? <laughs> Willie Nelson. Yeah. No, it's not Willie Nelson. It's, <laughs> it's the not. other one. It's the other one that you're thinking of. Yes. Kenny. So, Kenny Rogers. I think. Kenny. It is Kenny Rogers. Yes. Oh, I'm. No, I'm just glad you got yeah. the title. I thought you were gonna say it's no, no one to I hold him on fold him or something. Yeah. Yeah. No, I knew. I knew that. <laughs> I, I was. I was still pretty iffy on the title. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's called The Gambler, but like. You, uh, your you form has been typically not too good on the older songs, so no. I'm, I'm on, happy. You mean on the songs? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, well, I don't know why you had the clarifier of older. Basically. Every song is older than me. That's fine. I'll, I'll do. I'll do. Um, I'll do. WAP next week. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh please no. <laughs> okay, sorry. I got distracted by Brad being an idiot. <laughs> Which oh, I'm part so is glad the part that the I keep getting so I told get... I don't do? <laughs> Could be basically all of it, mate. Uh. <laughs> I'm so glad that this happened after the song, so I can keep it in the show. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want to see why Brad is being stupid, join the Discord. Discord.io slash Real Gamer Score. It's a perfect opportunity. You see all the fun pictures we send and stuff. You might even see me in a Playboy bunny outfit. Probably won't, but you might. Uh, we'll definitely get mentioned to the very least. Yeah, get I've, mentioned. I've, I sent, I've heard. I've heard tales. I sent it to Cameron. He was. <laughs> I, I, I'm just waiting for the most awkward moments. He was so, su- unsurprisingly turned on. <laughs> unsurprisingly, <laughs> unsurprisingly, it's, 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 those are his exact words. That's yes. exactly what he said yeah. to you. Yeah, and I quote. I probably wouldn't, but I might. I uh, <laughs> let's say how let's say desperate I get. Cameron oh. sent me a video, uh, a video, a picture of him doing karaoke many years ago. Yeah. Oh, I so... don't. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, moving we're all along. Up dirt here. Moving this... along. Oh, episode one, episode one hundred six. The secrets come out. <laughs> yeah. oh. Karaoke is that what is that what the guys call it these days? Oh, he had something in his hand. Singing yeah. into the oh. mic. <laughs> Mate, he was just skiing. I right? looked like he was the, just skiing. That photo too. I looked like the biggest tosser. <laughs> A little bit. Whoa. 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 Salad tosser. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Salad fingers. All right, moving along. Yeah, moving swiftly on. Um, 
if that has encouraged you to throw money at us, you can do so at the Patreon, patreon.com slash realgamerscore. We have multiple tiers. Um, I feel like I don't want to give a shout out to Trimmy because I feel like he dropped his sub just so he could resub so that he could get another shout out. <laughs> <laughs> like, Yeah, that seems inappropriate. Yeah. I mean, thanks, buddy, but... We talk on, about man, Trimmy a lot, though. Or, yeah, we love or maybe a little bit. It's dropped off since he stopped messaging us constantly on Twitter. He is. Oh, 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 oh! I've got news. Oh, okay. Well, we'll yeah, we'll get to. We'll that. wait to that part. <laughs> he is like a top one of our top twenty favorite patrons. <laughs> top twenty. Do we that's, have, that's a do hard, we have that's a hard list to beat. I don't yeah. know if we've got twenty. I, I, I know we have less than twenty. So <laughs> I was so going to say I thought it was closer to ten. <laughs> Mate, we've got no. like. More than 10. Less than 20. I think. So I, don't, I don't pay attention. I just see the money come into my bank account every week. A uh, month, sorry. <laughs> um, again, I saw the title of the episode that we're using. <laughs> Threw me off completely. Um, no, look, would... sh- no, don't, don't reveal the curtain. No, no, no. Don't let them know behind the curtain that I come up with the title before we record the show and this is all scripted. All right? I don't want... They, yeah. If we tell them that, then they won't listen. Uh it is the 1st of September. I had to think really hard what month it was. Uh, so, you know what that means? It means we've got a new random to-do list list out. Have we all... We've all taken a look at our list, right, guys? I have, yep. yep. Okay, uh, yeah. Alex, what is one thing that you're like, yeah, that's cool that that's on my list and that you might actually go for? Well, I think I have 187 achievements in the pool to pick from. So, it's just not much. so, so yeah, he, um, you, you could probably just guess which one it is. Yeah, I, I had a pretty good guess, uh, but Homefront Revolutions on there and Dead Island Riptide, and I'm I'm more excited about Riptide. Yeah, really. But why? I th- I think I don't want to get off on a tangent. You know, five minutes into the show, but. Homefront Revolution had the potential to be a very good game. Mm. Yeah, but it's like when it's almost like when on. you start enjoying yourself playing the game, it just constantly lets you down. He goes, Oh, you yeah. are having fun. No, no, we don't allow that here. Yeah, exactly. And what do you think you are? It's like you're walking along and there's there's an enemy and then all of a sudden he just vanishes in front of your face. And to the contrary, there's no one there and you're stealthing around and a guy just pops in in front of you and the, yeah. Anyway. It gets the tone, it gets and the then tone you're not right. the sneakiest it, the, of foxes. Of hounds, but yes. Fox hounds, yes. Yeah, I was going to say Kirby. Just I'm sorry. Out. Foxes are way um, sneakier than hounds. That's a terrible thing. <laughs> hounds hunt foxes. They're not wait, sneaky. Sneakiest They're quite of the loud. foxes. It's foxiest of the hounds. Yeah, sneakiest of the foxes. <laughs> <laughs> he foxed it up. Don't worry about it. I did, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to be foxed in editing, defeat. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, that's good. Yeah. That's what I said. Foxiest of the hounds. No. Okay. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> yeah, you get it here. Yes. <laughs> You're going to go through all that effort. No, but uh, if you would like to get a random to-do list list, which is a list of 25 locked achievements, you can do so by messaging myself or ZZ Urban Spaceman or Freemhole on Discord or messaging the random to-do list account on trueachievements.com. That's all one word. Um... Unless you're Valak, in which case I would definitely ignore all of your reminders to get you a list until someone else makes it. So that's good. Because I definitely forgot. Despite being told <laughs> twice. And then today, he said, you didn't make me a list, did you? I'm like, what? Just when leave, did you just, want Just leave him on red. <laughs> I'd need to give red a list too. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's all good. Uh, we have a contest related to that. The prize for this month is relatively new. It is the awesome... I don't even know what type of game it is, but it's Rocket Arena. That's not a Battle Royale, is it? It's like a, it's like Overwatch, but different. Yeah? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Okay. Rocket Arena by from EA. Brand new, thanks to uh, our good mate Dave. Dave Toss84. <laughs> Dave Toss He's a friend of the show, friend of the podcast. Good friend of mine, Dave Toss84. Uh, 84 has provided us with this code to offer to you. So, to get a chance to win that, uh, you just need to unlock any achievement in your random to-do list. Just one. Doesn't doesn't even have to be the hardest. Could be the easiest. And then send the answer to the trivia question to the random to-do list account. 
It will only count if you send it there. I will ignore all answers in the real game score account. Um, can can what? we make the que- can I make the question for this week? No. Ah, okay. Because I question? trust you less than Brad on that. Ooh. <laughs> what is what, what is Aftus's name? No. No. That's no. not the question. Oh, no. That's not the question. That has nothing Why to do not? with Rocket Arena. Um, another game with the word arena in it. Possibly okay. one that's not being shut down in five days. <laughs> okay. Yep, that's yep, yep, that's a good hint. I feel attacked. Why? It's not like you start oh wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> Didn't oh. you start that in like twenty fifteen? And then ignored the server shutdown notice? Weird. Possibly. Might Appa- have also just checked the three sixty, not the Xbox One. Apparently the Matt, do you get PMs on Discord about server closes? Uh, yeah, sets? I I got one I got three of them about FIFA Street. But don't worry about that one. <laughs> that's, that's, mistakes were made. Yeah. Um, but, but so you, have you? Have you haven't played FIFA Street, so you've said it to all games, right? I've said it to all games. Yes. Okay. Is it, it seems weird that the default is not games I've played. The default is yes. none. Because I'm like Cameron, why didn't you just like you got a PM about it? Surely he's like no. I'm like, but it's a setting. Why is it? It seems weird to me that the default setting is not please tell me when games I own are being shut down. Is that a pro feature or is that just the... I've got pro. Cameron has pro. But I don't think it's a pro feature. I know the um, unattainable discontinued uh, things are pro. Although now there's a thread that's made so I don't... It's kind of not so much. Six of one, half a dozen of the other, yeah. Yeah, you get a you get a notification about it but then there's also a thread made so it's like uh, uh, site settings closure server no I can't find anything on oh, TA who would have guessed notification settings what are you talking about it's so well set out Matt yeah notification settings which is the third third tab along in the settings section um, server closure notification the only reason I know there's a notification settings tab is because I've had to do it before. Again, that's ah. just that's very typical. You, really, it's not, ha- it's not massively intuitive and should just have, be easy for anyone to pick up and use. You have to know the site to be able to know how to do things on the site. By oh, doing that, it that before. must be really helpful for new users and, and uh, getting is. acquisition. Certainly is. Um, anyway, before I'm glad before the site I owner get, is a listener for the show. He just he's not, seems real sure. good at uh, taking on feedback. Yeah. Look, hopefully he fixes his site and makes it usable but anyway news <laughs> um, Avengers Assemble for like $100 a pop yeah that's well not $100 a pop but like it's it, yeah did you, did you guys I don't know if you guys saw this but uh, they announced a little while ago that they were like oh you know there's going to be free DLC for the Avengers game which free DLC up. characters the characters we free DLC you don't have to pay for them you can just you get the characters except Spider-Man on PC or on Xbox, but you get free, free characters. It's great. Yeah. Free characters. Um, the reason they're free is because you need to buy them with in-game currency or credits. Uh, the problem there mm-hmm. being is that apparently you need to buy those credits with real money most of the time. Um, okay, hold up. They, they do have two currencies. Yes, of course credits. I think is the hard one, like the the premium yeah. currency. I can't remember what the other credit, uh, the other one is. But keep yeah, going, appara- keep going. I yeah, think apparently they they have uh, you can buy battle pass stuff, and there's also hero challenge cards you can earn. Anyway, the, so basically they, they've just released a sort of list of like, hey, you know, you can get you know five dollars, five US dollars for five hundred credits, up to a hundred um, US dollars for 13,000 uh, 13, credits. You know, best value. Uh, and it works basically the same way as Fortnite, where you get like tokens and emotes and nameplates. So yeah, they're really games as a service thing, this as we expected. Um, but it turns out that apparently the DLC characters are going to be about ten bucks each. Uh, if you basically do them into credits or how the battle pass works again we still need to see it in action but um, yeah seems a little uh, I don't know uh, a little misleading I don't know it, it, it seems like it not great it seems like there's a lot of that going around maybe there's more more than I remember in um, you know going back a few years but it's almost like they know that announcing 
DLC characters saying, hey, they're going to cost $10 each is going to really piss people off. So they're going, no, 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 they're free. Mm. So, no, you just got to buy this currency to buy them, but you don't actually pay $10 to get the character. It's like, if you know, if you know that people are going to be pissed about a decision that you're making with the game, I think that gives you enough information to tell you what you should actually do. Yeah. Mm. Okay, hold up. So, the characters themselves are free. Yes, they are. Characters are free to play. Yep. They have a battle pass. Each character, as far as I'm aware, has a battle pass. Individual yep. battle pass. Which are $10 each. Is, yeah, they're $10 to buy, and that gets you skins and stuff only for that character. Yes, as far as we're aware. Yeah, so yep. they're like outfits, emotes, that sort of stuff. Um, they won't refresh the hero challenge cards, Square, Square Enix has said. So you, there, there's obviously your free track, as you have in all battle passes and your premium, but for each hero... And that's it. That's all it is. So you can play yeah. the character without using your credits to buy them. Yes. Oh, um, but you, that's different. But you don't get you don't get anything for them. You don't get any skins, which are completely cosmetic and don't affect gameplay. Well, so there's no that's there's no pay to win system. That's but different. you look really cool, and you play with people looking really cool, and you go, hmm, that looks really cool. I kind of want to get the thing that looks really cool. It's kind of like what we do in Rocket League. You want to get that titani- titanium white octane. Mm. You know, all yeah. the dueling dragons, non-titanium white dueling dragons. Goal explosion. Doesn't affect anything, but you look cool. Um, yeah, you well, see someone with it, and you go, oh, that looks cool, I want that thing. Yeah. Well, that's different to what I've said then, because there is there are examples of uh, developers going, oh, yeah, no, 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 it's, it's free. Technically, it's free. But you just have to buy this currency to, to get it. You don't you don't pay to buy the character, would you? It's, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, you're, um, you're at least if you currency. can play as the character, I feel better about that. Because if you have to buy yeah. buy each yeah. uh, DLC character for ten dollars each, oh come on, man. I guess that's that's I, no adds good. up quick. Yeah. yeah, I guess the thing is is that the the battle pass typically for previous titles for games of service have been you buy one you like you have a free tier battle pass and there's like a, a paid version. And you just, you know, you work your way through the paid version, you get all of the stuff that's on that season, for example. Mm. Yeah. And eventually it gets recycled to a new new battle pass. And typically, to encourage you to play a lot, you can earn your next battle pass by playing a lot of the current premium. But, like, that's yeah. typically how it's done in a, in a good system. Yeah, so they, so they have units in this game as their sort of in-game currency, and then the credits are the, uh, the paid version. So, yeah. whether you can earn enough within those battle passes to help pay for the next one, but I doubt it from the way they're sort of saying that this is going to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, considering they are giving you the characters for free, but you know, if you want any cosmetics or anything to do with that character, you have to basically pony up ten bucks, and then I guess so. When that battle pass, of, I guess I'd have to have a look. But does that mean you know you pay the ten bucks and you get everything immediately, or is that the ten bucks no. for, to that, earn the stuff? That means you basically unlock the premium track of rewards so then you still have to play a bunch to unlock the things (laughs) and and that that's all of the things you could unlock for like not not all of the things so like once you're at the end there's no more things you can can unlock by playing with the character anything else you want to get you'd have to purchase Mm. which they still will have they will still have cosmetics that you can only purchase through the marketplace it, yeah, well, and they've got, apparently got like a rotating store, like all of these things. Do yes, between, yeah, the so rotating it, store with premium to, currency. Make sure that people, you know, feel that there's a, some scarcity and they don't want to miss out and you know spend money. Yes. I mean, like so many games have done that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so. I, it just feels it just feels kind of scummy to be honest. I mean, like I'm I'm glad that like the actual gameplay doesn't seem to be affected by this stuff because that really would be the. I mean, to be fair, I don't any change to gameplay might be a positive for this game but <laughs> I've just had a look because I'm I'm curious as to answer the question how many Avengers are there yeah and given that there's been <laughs> just just in total just in, like in total in the comic book history well I I could probably find it for the comic book history but I went just to get a how simple answer Avengers in the final battle for Avengers Endgame obviously not what this game is based mm. on mm. there are 36 returning yeah, I characters I don't think they're going to do and that, that doesn't from the quick look at the list here that I don't think that includes 
the bad guys. No, it wouldn't. And and you think Endgame too? Spoilers, half of them. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Come on, man. Probably better going up. Probably better going off Infinity War there, buddy. Well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, they will come back anyway. But um, that's what I'm saying. So so. The rough equivalent of the top tier item, so what they're considering their legendary tier, is basically about twenty bucks Australian, which is is pretty standard fare for yeah. these kinds of games. What is it so for, for Rocket League? It's, it's about fifteen dollars, isn't it? Um, a black market is two thousand credits. So the black market, your top tier. No, I don't want to buy Rocket League credits. <laughs> oh, no, they know. They, they're SEO gamers Computer's strong. Computer's listening to you. Oh, I'll open up Rocket League real quick. Yeah, it, it, I think it's about $15, 20 So, that, that, again, that's pretty standard for your, your top-tier item. Unfortunately. But the difference is, for the most part, Rocket League top-tier items can be used on multiple things. Like, you, if you've got a goal explosion, so when you score a goal, you can put that on any of your cars. It's not just for that single mm-hmm. character. Mm. you buy the wheels you can put them on any of your cars some of the skins are car specific but I, how, how do you guys feel about the whole battle pass thing that's becoming so prevalent I mean on the one hand oh no it's Man, not Kiwi a bad enjoy invited me to Rocket League <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's it's not like, I, like on the one hand I don't think it's a bad way of getting people to play your game and actually feel like they're earning something while playing it especially if it's a game that doesn't have a lot of ongoing progression so like a battle royale where it's re- pretty much reset every every time you play it. It's just this, you know you, you don't and nothing carries over. You don't have levels or anything like that uh, traditionally anyway. But on the other hand, if you're paying ten bucks for content, shouldn't you just get the content? I mean, in terms if it's cosmetics and skins, like I don't like it used to be like oh hey, uh, you know get get the deluxe edition and we'll you know throw in a, a, a custom spider-man outfit for spider-man or whatever that you know you can only get that way or some skin or weapon or whatever yeah, yeah but that sucks um, as a pre-order bonus i mean like <laughs> also bad like it's also not great but i'm just thinking like this is ex- basically the same thing except now you have to basically pay it and then earn it as well i i think that battle passes generally speaking battle passes are good if you you can buy the game and you can play the game, you can have as much enjoyment from the game as you want. And I'm thinking about Rocket League for this. I bought the first one, and I think we're coming up to Rocket Pass Rocket 7. Pass 7. Yeah. Yep. So I bought the first one, I got some stuff from it, and I mean, I haven't changed my main loadout for years, presumably. Mm. I don't know if I've had the watermelons for years. But it, no, it watermelons gives... are recent. Is it? Oh. Last couple of months, because the boost was in the last Rocket Pass. Okay, all right. But the, it gives you something to work towards. If you look at the Rocket Pass and you go, hey, you know what, at tier 25, they've got this really cool thing that I want, plus I'm going to get all these other things along the way. It's It gives you an option to, if you want to spend, a, you know, 10 or $15 something to, to extend the items you can get in-game, it's good. But also, yeah. I feel like it's not nickel and diming you the way some games do and I hate mm. that about video games it's like it how is, much does it, this game cost me like Rocket League I mean it's gone free to play but you can get for 20 bucks yes. you know you, you so, buy for 20 bucks no dramas you don't have to put any more money in you can get items you get drops no problem but it's like whereas like I feel like sometimes this is a ridiculous example but I feel like oh you want to play chapter 2 that's an extra 2 dollars Chapter 3? Mm. Yeah, that's an extra $3. I mean, what I know that doesn't tell? happen. Well, okay. That's a literal example. <laughs> but I just feel like that at times. Like I hate being nickel and dimed in anything. It's like, tell me yes. how much it's going to cost. Don't try and be like, oh, it's $10. By the way, if you want this, it's 11 Now it's 12 It's 30 Like, Tell me how much it is. Well, here's the psychology behind the battle pass. Um, <clears throat> and it's it's... Funnily enough, does it, from Matt, does, it is the popcorn theory, almost. I was just about to ask, has it got anything to do with popcorn? Oh, he's it, learning, mate. He's been really. doing this. Been doing it it doesn't, it doesn't. So essentially, you can play it for free and get your free track. You can buy the premium track for 10 bucks, or you can buy the premium track and get all of the items for 15, <laughs> uh, 20, 25, 30 bucks, something like that. Yeah. So you go, I already play this game a lot. 
like I wouldn't want to pay to get everything when I'm just going to play and get them anyway. So I'm just yep. going to get the ten dollar one, and then they've got ten dollars out of you that they weren't going to before. And now, and now you're more invested because you have to play the game for that period yes. of time, otherwise you've lost money. So yes. it's just, so they they hit you with a sunk cost fallacy as well. So yep. oh, it's sunk it's cost. Re- Welcome to the business really and economics insidious. part of the podcast. Wow, <laughs> I haven't heard sunk cost in ages. Oh look, mate! I'm, and I'm then an they get the COVID positive control and shove it costs. up your nose. That's my contribution. That's that's my area of expertise. <laughs> I think it's I think it's also good because in a game, I mean, like Rocket League or Fortnite, if they didn't change, you'd get bored with it. So it actually sure. has more people yeah. playing because at least Rocket League, when you go on, it tells you how many people are online, and in certain playlists, so you know, you know. Like, but but I th- I think the difference there is that. Uh, like rock, for, like Rocket League is first of all. Well, let's say Fortnite is probably the best example because they're the biggest one. Mm-hmm. Fortnite is a free to play game with a, with a, a lot of people playing it, and especially it's very heavily multiplayer. I mean, there's a hundred people in a game, right? Mm-hmm. And the other thing is that there isn't really any out out of game progression in the game itself. It's battle royale, like that's all it is. It's a battle royale. That you play it, you win it, you die, whatever. You just do it again. Avengers has a story mode. It has leveling. It has all kinds of stuff, uh, and it's you know co-op focused. It's like more Destiny like rather than that. And I just feel like when you take some of those factors away, you know, when you charge for the game, when the game has less multiplayer exposure, and the game has its own progression systems that essentially it's trying to get more out of you for being on top of you, that you have to pay to get access to. Basically, uh, I just feel like. Like you, you're, you're stripping away some of the defense that you have of using this system. If that makes sense. But also sunk costs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look, we, we can go through all the fallacies if you want. I'm an expert on fallacies. <laughs> that was that was highbrow. That was a good one. That was good work. All right. Um, more. Actually, I was when I when I thought there was ten dollars for each character, I just thought you were outraged. Are they having outraged a culture. meeting Cancel and going? Culture. Cancel Avengers. <laughs> well, I don't care. I'm not going to play. It doesn't affect me. The only thing that affects me about this is that we got it does Avengers you, instead it of does Deus Ex. You, you know how it affects you? Okay. Um, because when it becomes successful, that's the trend, and then people yeah. follow. If it becomes successful. Which it doesn't look like it will, but it won't because I'm that, not going to. That's how it, it affects you. I'm that's why everything has a battle royale mode now because Fortnite was successful. You don't everything particularly has a like pass. Fortnite, yeah. but that's why. So it, it it indirectly indirectly affects you by being successful because the things you like stop being made because it doesn't make as much money as the thing you don't like. The things I like yeah. have been stopped being made for a long time. There's no Dead Island two. Was is there going to be a Series X remaster for Dead Island? I mean, we can, we can do that. considering that how God, how, how, how they handle that. Nordic? Yeah, I was going to say uh, yes, 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 deep yes there will be. It's deep yeah, I was going to say yeah, yeah, yeah. Deep, yeah. So, there will definitely be a non-backwards compatible. Yeah, They'll be deep like, Silver oh, no. who are owned by THQ Nordic because yeah. everyone yeah. is at this point, pretty much. Um, yes, there will be a Series X remaster um, with a new list and all DLC because why not? Yeah, but also it won't look or play any different. There won't be any improvements. It'll just basically be a port, and they'll, they they'll will say artificially cause it to load the same amount of time. Yep. So that, for that yeah. nostalgic it's, experience, it's authentic collectors are going to be salivating over it. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh dear. That's prob- That's probably enough about salivating over the Avengers. The yeah. only one that is is. Well, actually, we, we get his opinion right now. Brad, what do you think of the game? All oh, right, we can't hear you because your mic's not on. Da, 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 da. <laughs> He's the only one that wants his game to come out. He's the only one. Uh, yeah. Did you guys like that bit at the at the end of last week's podcast that you definitely listened to, where I left in the one mention of asking Brad a question and then just having dead air? Well, I haven't listened yes. to last week's show yet. <laughs> I I, in, yeah. I enjoyed that. Kirby always listening to the shows. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. I'm See, always we're, watching we're, the shows. I mean, to be fair, Kirby was also on the show last week. He doesn't even know it. Oh, <laughs> he's going to oh, listen. No. He's going to listen. What have I done? <laughs> Sorry, I just like, I, might, I might have spliced an audio clip in. 
you actually? Was it me being mean to Brad? Because it should have been. No, it was you. It was you. Was you explaining what the random to do list question was? Because I had to cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, because Brad was talking through it so I didn't make any sense so I had to cut it out and put in your clip of you saying what the question was last week 110% wouldn't have made sense because you would have stopped and paused for an idiot who's not recording properly yep, yep properly. exactly so is what it is yep oh dear alright uh, moving on oh, I'm loading up the story okay accept all cookies <laughs> <laughs> yes um, you could have my first born Black, cookies? Black Ops operatives, so good you can't recognize their voices. So, <laughs> the original voice actor behind Frank Woods is so bummed, he's in, in air quotes, so bummed, he's not reprising his role in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. What a mouthful of a name. Yeah, that's not a, that's not a great title, right? When I um, first read this title earlier today, I must have been real tired because I thought Frank West is not going to be in Dead Rising 6. <laughs> oh. Wow, man, you must have been. That baby's really no, taking a toll Hank on East your sleeper. Is, Hank East, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sleep has um, sleep has been not uh, super forthcoming. <laughs> but I mean, all that video game time, so it's worth it, right? Yeah. No, I'm just like a literal zombie <laughs> instead of playing zombies. <laughs> Pretty much it. The okay. Island Two is just your life. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, now I so, know why it's not coming out. The sequ- yeah, exactly. The Everyone's sequel favorite was character, inside of us all Frank Woods, who we all know and love, and I didn't remember at all. I was like, I, I was like, really? was, I was like, oh, look, I, I haven't played Black. I really enjoyed Black Ops when it came out, and I enjoyed Black Ops Two for the most part. But the only character I remember is like, was it like Reznov? That's who the was only like, character I know. I've not played a Black Ops game. And but then he was like fictional oh. at the end of the the first game. Or I don't even remember. Whoa, well, spoilers, I, well, man. I, Look, the no, game's no, 100 no, no, years no, no. old. All I remember is no. all I remember is the numbers, Mason. What do the numbers mean? And then when when you finally That's discover all I what know they about are, it. and I've never all, played it. And then all I remember is when you finally discover what the numbers are actually about. The guy, the bald guy, walks in and puts the sunglasses on inside, and Hudson. then you go to the next mission. Hudson. Hudson. Yeah, and I was like, okay, that's the oh. most ridiculous thing ever. It's great. I have no idea. I'm, I'm so cut up right now. Was, was he? Tell us, the- tell us who he is, Cameron. Hudson or Woods or please explain Black Ops. What what is a Cold War? (laughs) Yeah, what is a Cold War? Explain that to us, buddy. (laughs) It's a war that just happens in the winter, obviously. (laughs) Oh, that's that's why Russians are always involved. That makes sense. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, In terms of Black Ops One, though, me and Adrian having a good discussion. No, 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 no. Explain to me what a Cold War is. I I got no idea. Okay, all right. All right, so so it's one one for the history uh, history spinoff podcast. Yeah, that'll be. Um, I don't. It's not even going to be real game score after dark. It's real game score in black and white. <laughs> real game score <laughs> back to school. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I would love. We really need to do a spinoff podcast where I explain things to Cameron that he doesn't know about. <laughs> and that is too much content. Question too much further content, and further. Too I much mean, look, content. look. We 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 need to make up the content on the Patreon. There's 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 a whole mind's worth of of content that we could pull out of this. You can start with sunk costs. Yes, exactly. We will start with fallacies, and we'll move on to our thermonuclear war. <laughs> <laughs> Just what seven? Which is seven degrees of ba- Kevin Bacon? <laughs> yes, we get exactly. from get from. <laughs> Cost Sun cost isn't that the theory that everybody war. within war seven yeah. people in the world everybody knows Kevin Bacon yes that is okay so you've okay. got one do you see there's I one thing one. you do know okay yes you're only seven people away from the, the only Bacon. the only things I know about uh, thermonuclear war is from uh, drunk physicists uh, talking on YouTube podcasts I mean that's essentially what this podcast would be so stop stop telling other people that people have already done our idea anyway okay. please explain to me what, who Frank Woods is again so Frank Woods is basically. Is he selling uh, tiles at National Tiles? <laughs> no, that's Frank Walker. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it interrupted you, Cameron, but it just came to me, and I thought that was funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, oh, good. Is, he the, um, is he the comedic duo partner of Lano? Oh no, <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not doing. We're not doing this bit where he has a slightly different last name, but his first name's Frank. All right. No, we've already done the Frank, the but Hank East. Bit, I, get, okay? I got that one right. <laughs> you did, you know, you got it, but no. All right, going along. So <laughs> basically, man. in from as much as I can remember, Black Ops uh, One's campaign, 
Frank Woods is your, I guess, cooperative, uh, your partner when you're behind doing the missions and all that. He gets kidnapped in, I want to say, the Korean War. Okay. And yeah. is held in a shipping container with all his dead comrades for about exact timing. I think it's like one to three months. Wow. But he like fa- like basically goes away to nothing. Um, I don't want to put in too many spoilers, but most of the campaign is centered around you, the protagonist, um, uh, Alex Mason, yes. I believe. Um, and just a lot of things that aren't making sense to your um, to your comrades. They're having an outside view in, um, and you're just basically going along, um, basically getting told um, what to do from Victor Reznov who you met in a Russian prison. That I do remember. Okay. That's it. Like, I'm trying to keep this as blanket as possible without putting that many spoilers in, because if you take the time to realize how Black Ops 1 actually ends, which I'm sure that a lot of you would probably skipped past and not came to the conclusion. Mm -hmm. I didn't Um, get past the the beginning. Anyway, so... It it, it is an old game, but I'm just like, there is a absolute, like, killer of a spoiler at the end yeah, yeah anyway okay so you know what the spoiler is? um it was me austin it was me all along <laughs> that's been that's been one of my favorite memes in the last week uh... anyway moving along um yeah so he's in the first game he's in the second game. well he's in all four games um as far as i'm aware they got uh james c burns to voice him in all four games i'm pretty sure there are Black four Ops. of them yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I was like, actually, I've, One, two, three, I've and four. forgotten that there were actually th- two other Black Ops games that I haven't played. Oh, hello. Black Ops. Whoops. I can't hear anything Black Ops... Th- um, not I'm trying to get off topic. Black uh, Ops uh, 1. Let me just... Let no, me just... you keep going. You keep going. Don't... I'm no, 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 you keep going. I'm editing in the south. Just, I'm guys, in the just, south. Keep no, just keep going. It's fine. No, I'm not going to keep going. Just get going with the show. It'll be fine. Just keep going. I'm back, by the way. Okay, all right. Sorry, Cameron, you were saying? All right, yeah. So, in terms of the... In terms of the games, like Black Ops 1 has one of the best campaigns I've ever played, in my opinion. Uh, Black Ops 2, relatively decent. Um, multiplayer was probably the best thing. 3, yeah, pretty good. 4, trash. Absolute trash. Let's reinvent the wheel of everything and chuck in a um, chuck in a Battle Royale mode because everybody else is doing it. But going back to the story... Good Battle Royale um, Pardon, what was that? It was a good Battle Royale mode. I mean, I got all the achievements because I knew that uh, the servers was going to go dead in like six months, but yeah, wouldn't classify it anywhere near good. Uh, they haven't so, populated it with bots yet? I don't think they have. No, and that's the sad bit. Yeah, no, whatever. Anyway, do you see I think they just made the servers smaller, but yeah. Moving along, um, he's pretty bummed out because trailer, cinematic trailer for... Um, Cold War drops, and it just sounds like a guy doing a poor impression. Oh, well, that sucks. Which is seeing all the money that um, Treyarch and Activision definitely haven't lost. <laughs> haven't lost. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Bob, Bob, Bobby Kotick is very expensive. He's the, oh, he's just... the most overpaid CEO pretty much ever. He definitely yep. isn't gaming for sure. Mm. And like top five in entertainment period. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it seems like James C. Wood's not making a return. Uh, Sam Worthington's not making a return. Uh, who played Alex? Um, I'm trying to think who played Sam Worthington. Hudson. That name sounds he was, real. He was wheelchair He's boy an in Avatar, right? Uh, uh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is a guy. I'm glad I just had yeah. to say wheelchair boy. I've never <laughs> seen Avatar. I just know that Sam Worthington is wheelchair boy. <laughs> you said wheelchair boy, and I thought of the, the male-ish Avatar. I don't know why I went straight there. Was he in a wheelchair? Anyway. Um, he was paralyzed from the waist down, and that's why he was good uh, with yeah. the. Okay. That's whatever. why he became the Avatar. Uh, yeah, alright, fair enough. And some air bending work. and some stuff. Mm, <laughs> yes, that one. Yes. <laughs> Touch tips or something. And then they pulled out the cable, and he got stuck in the Matrix. Yeah. No, and then he became uh, Prince Zuko. And then they had sex with their hair. No, that's Dante. That's Dante Basco. Anyway, um, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like, def- Love yes, Jake Long. Yes, I've to- uh, so top, top, top level humor here. The two things have the same name, so we're just going to pretend they're the same thing. 
Um, anyway, yeah, Jason Hudson, also Ed Harris. Um, yeah, basically all the main cast have been replaced. I, I, heard, I heard they didn't even get Ronald Reagan to do Ronald Reagan. <laughs> no, no, oh it's disappointing. God. This is this is the thing though. This is how dodgy they're being about it. They've announced all the how they're going to do it in the new Cold War game is you don't have to play as the main characters from the previous titles. You can pick a completely new operative, and they're talking about you can play your run and gun kind of COD, or you can collect intel, unlock a little bit more of the mission, do it a little bit more secret, that kind of stuff, which sounds pretty cool in my opinion i love black ops so i'm hoping that works out well uh all their new hero casts have everybody credited for voice actors but none of the old um characters have been credited which is oh. very strange okay so yeah they're basically completely at this point at least well yeah again it's when, when does it come out november yeah pretty sure it's november release date yeah i well we'll talk probably talk about it in a little bit but yeah the, the release date might tie in with a, another a significant release date considering there's a, mm. a bit of a co-op deal going on there yeah but um yeah so james c burn is not happy about it and he's just poking fun on the internet uh there was rumors going around that it was caused to him lending his voice uh to a character made zombies map uh sorry a fan made zombies map a few years ago so they were just going on like oh he's definitely broken some claws in his contract but mm. not not the case apparently it's just all the previous actors got done dirty i mean is it is it dirty if in their contract it wasn't for another game and they didn't bring him back is it like it just it just seems really weird though that you would have four games over a decade and then get rid of all your main voice actors does, does it, it seem though? A bit weird oh well maybe a little bit i guess to, to people who really really care but i guess the other thing is that like black ops 4 didn't have a uh, multiplayer mode right oh, sorry sorry Corporate sorry campaign. it didn't it didn't have a campaign it, mode right no it had a series <laughs> of like <laughs> script, of, of cut scenes yeah. that kind of like how titanfall had a campaign oh god okay so i think the the original plan was to have a campaign but because uh i There's think it was no infinity in player <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Infinity Ward I think dropped the ball that year and right. then they had they had to take up because how it runs is Activision Infinity Ward and Treyarch work on a uh, three year three year basis yeah cause so it was Infinity like, Ward was would do it one Sledge, year Sledge, was a Sledgehammer Infinity Ward and Treyarch right? oh yeah sorry yeah, yeah Sledgehammer yep yeah. Sledgehammer dropped the ball. Yeah, which That's yeah, okay, so, and, and so because Infinity Ward did the Modern Warfare 1 so they're doing Black Ops now and then Sledgehammer who yeah. knows and Black Ops 4 got rushed because of Sledgehammer dropping the ball. Right. Sledgehammer will be making a, a Call of Duty hardline. Oh, yeah, which I'm sure will go down great. You get to be a cop, which, yeah. you know, like, man, uh. when, when when Call of Duty hardline came out, it was already a little, um, it was always it was already a little <laughs> iffy to be playing a cop that was getting militarized weapons and to be driving around shooting at criminals. If you release that game now, oh, boy, things have only gotten worse. What was that oh, Ubisoft like, game? That I like how you say Call of Duty Hardline. Oh, yeah, anyway, sorry, Battlefield Like, Hardline. not Battlefield yeah. Hardline. Uh, Ubisoft game? But, um, uh, yeah, Rainbow... S- was it Rainbow Six? Tom Clancy's new game, Elite Squad. Oh, that oh, terrible looking... Yeah. Yeah, where they used the uh, Black Lives Matter symbol... Uh, symbolism <laughs> and the, yeah. the, uh, the logo's not the right word but the I don't iconography iconography there we go that's better bigger and sort of like trashed a little, little. yeah not good yeah, yeah. Know, it's um yeah, yeah. just maybe, maybe um, just step off a little bit these big companies certainly have their ear to the ground oh the, especially the French ones they're always so uh, they're, always, they're always so with it and uh, mm. understanding of tone um yeah which we'll get to Going back to the story anyway, I, I'm yeah, I'm just really surprised that they replaced, especially Woods' actor of all people. Like, mm. I would say Alex and that, you know, like he has voice lines and that, but I feel like Frank Woods is a very iconic for Call of Duty. He would be definitely up in the top three most iconic characters. It does seem like it's the the sort of David Hayter, um, uh, was it Keith, uh, Keith Sutherland? 
thing they did with Metal Gear Solid, where they were just like, oh, I'm just going to replace Snake's voice. Don't worry about it. Like, Have nobody will know Snake the whole time. Yeah, it was, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's fine. And it's like, oh boy. Oh, I have a clip to show you later. Okay, yeah, yeah. Great. Did you, did you see the one I sent from last week? Anyway. Um, yeah, it, it, like, it sucks. And I, like, and I think you're right, Kirby. Like, obviously, they, they shouldn't expect to get the role straight away. Like, you still have to, you know, prove that you can still do the voice and that you're still interested and stuff like that. But you would think that just, like, on goodwill that you would contact the person who previously did the voice if you're still in a good mm-hmm. working relationship to continue working with them. Like, it just seems to make sense. Yeah, but then fifth time in a row, things start getting more expensive to have those people. Mm. Yeah, that's the other thing. The, the, the contract is expected to be bigger as mm. things are moving mm. along and we, like, and they, they cut costs where they can. Like, it's... It's, yeah. it's their business. Crap. The- and not not like not ideal but that's that's activision that's ubisoft that's yeah that's that's what they do it's weird though when it's like a direct sequel to a previous game like it's not a swap a campaign and didn't have them really so yeah that's what i'm wondering sorry no i mean like as in it's a direct sequel to one though yeah like in terms of story wise yeah yeah um more so though of a case of the guy that's obviously voice acting now instead of james lee burns is copying the mannerisms and copying the like it's not a reboot of what the character yeah it's the same character like, so it's could it, potentially it, it, be so it's almost certainly money right we can all agree on yeah. that yeah it's money I guess <laughs> it's unfortunate that Call of Duty doesn't make enough money to get the actors back yeah I know right one mic <laughs> equals one dollar for Activision yeah no they're yeah. just, um, they're just yeah. not, not raking it in as they used to and dislikes well, actually is minus a hundred so the funny joke, haha, ha, ha. good one, Alex. Um, legitimately, you're, you're they cannot, they cannot uh, promote that they have had increased profits over last, like increased percentage profits over last year, if they're spending more money on voice actors. Like the the, the risk it is a risk analysis. Is hmm. will we be able to sell enough that the increase in cost for this actor will still allow us to have profit? after we fired a thousand employees well speaking of good jokes that uh, hit well Kirby you, you're on fire mate <laughs> that's not a joke <laughs> it's, just, I'm, it's just a depressing they're gonna fire a thousand people <laughs> just like they fired 800 people last year and just like they what did they do recently what did they do recently to get Drowns extra kittens? profits raise the executives I don't know. They pay. I mean, they don't pay don't tax. Know. What do they care? Sacrifice a small child. I mean, yeah, it's, like oh, it's hilarious. They don't pay tax, and then they get the business tax breaks. They get tax breaks. Of, they get one hundred and fifty million. They pay minus tax. They pay negative tax, and none of it goes to the employees. It all goes to the the executives. Yeah. It's ridiculous. We need to, we need to start sharpening those guillotines. Trickle we, uh... up economy. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to get this. It all, it, it, all ties, of... it all ties back to Reagan in the end, you know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right. All right. All right. That's, Maybe all right, if we right, had let's, 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 let's move on. Let's move on before before we um before the bourgeoisie come after. All us. right. Uh, once again, the pipes are leaky, and the or is it the fables being announced again? Yeah. No. no, no that no, was no. it. Was the second? It was the second worst kept secret. Sorry. Right. Yep. Yeah, um. The cheaper next gen xbox is not announced or leaked but it exists <laughs> yeah it's, it, it, it it's, is being referenced in marketing material more yeah. and more every day I'm, I'm just like perfect dark it's just around the corner no no i don't want not, it no, there is not, <laughs> no evidence for that whatsoever none and there shouldn't be because that perfect dark <laughs> is bad it's it's bad and it won't make a quadruple a game you no. cannot make a quadruple no. A game out of it. You just can't. Like it's it's not possible. Until they try. Okay. So, um, ignoring Cameron completely, as per usual, uh, a Twitter user said that they bought a new Xbox controller for the Xbox One, and in the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Trial card that you get, because you always get a trial, it mentions the Xbox Series X slash S. Same on, way the, the on the controller's dead. Yeah. yeah. 
So again, th there's not much of a story there. It's just furthering, continuing the idea that clearly this is going to be a thing that happens. I mean, um, I mean, Phil it could have definitely said, been a misprint on possibly hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of controller cards. <laughs> I mean, look, like you joke, but that kind of stuff does happen, <laughs> like really easily. I ha having worked in some in a place that does do that kind of work, where we go out to thousands of customers. Yeah. Somebody at Microsoft's just like, how can I really mess Not with even that? that? It's Consumers. someone in the factory printing these cards and going, Series S is a thing, right, boys? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, oh, they oh, announced oh. it already. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Oh, they, they, they must have forgot to put it on here. Yeah. I'll send it back to them. And, and then goes, they just oh, yeah, they add it themselves, print off 10,000, and send them out. Uh, yeah. Um, so once again, it's it's the cheaper version of the Series X, lower teraflops, uh, slightly lower RAM, I think, but it's the same CPU. So yeah. and and hard drive or sorry NVMe drive. So um, still it getting things just as quickly, but l won't look quite as good, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, did we did we have an August show? We did. Didn't no, we? so that so that was the other thing no. is that. There was the talk that they were going to announce it at an August show, but that looks like it's been pushed to September. Yeah, when they're um, supposed to do it, twenty twenty every month. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah. they they backed away from that pretty quickly when they realised no one liked the first one that they did, and the second one didn't go down super well either. <laughs> so they've done like two events over the last like four months. So now they're yeah. doing them every two months, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess so. They, they do apparently there will be one relatively early in September, and I'm sure they'll have to announce they'll do a big thing because that's pretty much where you announce price, right? Because yep. the, yep. the, the device comes out in November, we're almost certain of that. Depends if they're done playing chicken or not, I suppose. Well, do we think mm -hmm. they will do something similar to PlayStation and ha you have to apply for a pre-order? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, Is that oh, what actually, PlayStation are doing? Yeah. PlayStation have for their basically their first wave of whatever oh, PlayStation Five. Okay. Um, yeah. You have to apply to get an invitation to be able to pre-order. Yeah. Some of the criteria include, um, pl uh, like, basically how much PlayStation you've played because you <laughs> give your PlayStation ID. Yeah. Okay. So essentially they're going to be picked... Okay, we don't know exactly how they're, they're going to pick... They're going to pick power pick. users almost certainly. Yeah, they are likely going to pick people who were already going to like it. Yeah, yeah, and but also it does talk to the fact that there's potentially going to be shortages, and they're going to have to be stringent. Or whether the shortages are, um, well, I probably can't legally say um, uh, artificial, but there might be some restraining of stock. Yeah, um, hmm. to certain areas uh, to increase the scarcity and the hype. Yeah, because if you because if you have to go to you know if 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 you find out that there's only five hundred of them and you know they're they're selling out fast. Then you might want to quickly go and get one for yourself before yeah, you miss it's out. It's a pretty well, supreme strategy. Weren't they saying uh, a little while ago that they were doubling their production numbers because yes. it was so yeah, much? Yeah, four is technically four? double of two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. I mean, it is. Yeah. There are there are a lot of PS4s out there. Yeah. With, without concrete numbers, doubling means, mm. and not even concrete. It without. I think that article numbers. did have numbers in it, though. The doubling of the production yeah, units. I think, like I think it did have number yeah. a number on it. Anyway. All right. If only you could I guess e with that helpful, even useful, almost vital information for that story. <laughs> love, you, love having you back on the show, Alex. Uh, yeah, so sorry. You just, just, it was a story we did talk about. So they're, they're doubling their production units to 10 million in 2020, though. So okay. this, so this would be, so so this, yeah, so this will be stuff that they're trying to push really hard at the end of the year. But how many of them they get out, I'm not sure. But even yeah. so, 10 million units, they they yes. were under they were underdoing it because they <sighs> figured COVID was going to cause more of a problem in terms of sales, uh, in yeah. terms of hardware production and sales. Because first of all, it's harder to produce them because you know there are problems with production, and also because people have less money because of the way the economy is. Yeah. But things yeah. seem to be bouncing back, at least in terms of gaming. Um, in and terms and of hardware, people that will be spending money on a gaming console, at least in that market. Yes, exactly. In, in the market, that, in the early adopter, like you know, power user market, which is why they're doing this kind of thing to to get the hype going and also track the users who are going to be potentially pre-ordering. Yeah, it'll be like that uh, Simpsons episode. I'm trying to think which one. Um, 
where Homer rushes out to buy something. Just, I, I don't know if it's a trampoline or something. No. It's you tell me, right. buddy. You tell me. <laughs> What's The Simpsons? Never heard of it. Can you explain to me what The Simpsons no. is? <laughs> no. <laughs> are you, are you thinking um, of when he goes to buy the Canyonero car? No, like he rushes out to buy something and they're just like, Oh, mate, don't know if we've got any left. Checks out the back. The whole room is full of them. Yeah, that's pretty much what's going to happen. Yeah. Although, I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think what episode that was. But I'm, won- I'm wondering if they're going to... I don't know if they'll do the same kind of thing because it seems to kind of go against the myth- the sort of ethos that Microsoft are putting forward. Because the PlayStation, they kind of seem to be moving in more of a, you know, um, expensive games, high production value, limited quantity... Uh, whereas Microsoft's going more that yeah everyone can play get get all the machines you can etc cetera, etc cetera. and I think it works would work better for Microsoft to be as open as possible to have as many units out there and to make it as available as possible to sort of go with what they've been saying yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, assuming that that rumored price for the Series X is five ninety nine mm. what does this what price point does this console need to be at to be worthwhile what's what's the Series X is twelve teraflops. Yeah, twelve. Okay, 12, so it's we're, we're a third of the teraflops. I think, I think it's like half of the RAM. I feel like sixteen gig is what the yeah Series X has. So, we expecting a physical. Uh, sorry, we expecting a disk drive for this, or yes, they'll reckon all have it's going to be a I would say so. Yeah, like I think that okay. they, they don't want to exclude anyone from it, uh, and because the disk drive is like would be such a small component in terms of production cost and the form factor. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay, so five ninety nine for the expensive one. This has got to be at three ninety nine, three forty nine. Yeah, I would. Say, I mean, three ninety nine is probably about. Yeah, I, I was going to say three forty nine to three ninety nine. Yeah, I would say three. three I mean, I don't think they're going to be a get like if they sell it at three forty nine, they're going to make a huge loss on it. And I think that like consoles traditionally have been sold at a loss, not recently, but in the past the last sort of well, six even initially when the Xbox One came out it's just then that costs got cheaper as your production got better of course which is which is yeah. how it always mm-hmm. goes yeah um, but like this generation too much of a cut that's what I'm thinking is that like the, the, the way you justify it it's a loss leader right again we're getting into more mm-hmm. economics talk but um, it, it's a loss leader in terms of that like the PlayStation 2 and earlier all of those consoles lost money every, t- every time they sold one they lost money but they made it up on attachment in terms of sales of accessories mm-hmm. and games yeah right so with the place I think it was with the PlayStation 3 and the 360 they actually started making money on the consoles for the first time it wasn't a lot and it took them a long time to start making that money but they did eventually make it and with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One they made money from day one it was a tiny amount but that amount has increased as production costs have gotten cheaper and the materials get cheaper and etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah um, going, going for them going back to a loss leading model is still possible but first of all shareholders aren't going to like it because it'll cause problems mm-hmm. because again they, they're going to start seeing losses where they were seeing gains profit mm-hmm. yep. the other thing is that the att- attach rates are all reliant on software and, and accessories right mm-hmm. All ex- almost all Xbox One hardware is forward compatible yep. and there are no yep. games for either console for at yep. least the next six months the, like, they can't afford to, like, un- unless they really, really want to just really stick it to Sony, which they might do. And push mm-hmm. Ultimate hard. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. P- push in a That's completely why you get a 14 day trial in every single accessory. It is true. It is true. It is to get them onto the service. But the thing is, yeah, it's going to be, I think it'll be a hard ask. Because uh, as soon be- as you're on the service, how hard is it for them, to, for someone to go, well, now I want to stop and lose all these games yeah, yeah like, that's as true. soon like, as you're yeah. on it's, it's you, you get the free yeah you get the free bump and then you're hooked yeah pretty much yeah and then <laughs> and so so you guess the, the way you have to weigh it up is how much are they willing to lose to get people into that ecosystem mm-hmm. and how much can they how much mm-hmm. can they lose and how much do they want to lose yeah because like <laughs> it, selling it at that rate they're going to make a loss yep guaranteed I don't know. I, I don't know if this is. I don't know if this is the right move. Having a chip, much keep a, a cheaper console, mm, having two skews. Yeah. I don't. Mm. Especially with not at launch at least. No. When there's games, maybe because at this point, you get a cheaper Xbox One X. 
waiting yeah. times a little bit longer, but it looks better. It all plays first party, exactly all the same. The, all the first party stuff comes to Game Pass and is on both consoles. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a hard ask. I, I don't know that it's that hard of an ask, because if Microsoft... Let's just say Microsoft's aim is to get people on Game Pass. Sure. Which yeah. obviously they're pushing very hard. If you do that on a $400 machine or a $600 machine, Microsoft don't care. True. They True. get your you know, money in the bank each month or each year if you, bought, you find a yearly code. Mm-hmm. So I, I can see your points about maybe not doing it at launch, but if they had it at launch and it was, say, five ninety nine for the Series X, four ninety nine for the PlayStation 5, and three ninety nine for the Series S, mm-hmm. then Microsoft wins you both ways. They get the premium yeah, users on the yeah. X, the people that are on yeah. PlayStation can be like, oh, I'm saving $100, but then they undercut them again with the, yeah. cheaper, the cheaper box. And it, but I think it's yeah. it's a strategy. I don't know if it's yeah. a good strategy, I think that that's but it's probably a the way they're going to go about it, right? Like that was, and we've talked about this in the past, where you know you you sell the cheaper box at three nine nine, and you can say in your marketing, you know, get the Xbox Series from the, the, new, the new Xbox yeah. Series from three nine nine. You know, mm. yeah, yeah. Get, get get into next gen gaming with the you know Xbox Series three nine nine. Like, but the, I think the other thing is that Sony knows that that's probably what's going to happen, which is why they're going to. They, if they're a hundred bucks cheaper again, yeah, they, they come in at, at five nine nine or four four whatever four nine nine whatever it ends up being. That's gonna be that's gonna be a tough one for for Microsoft again, and also there uh, the rumor is is that the uh, the the digital only version of their console is gonna be significantly cheaper, like ridiculously cheaper. Yeah, like like like, like, like almost like two hundred bucks cheaper. I keep forgetting Jeez. that they have a discless. Yeah, which is so they're sort of attacking it on that same and it's, front. That Mark's pulling out a Blu-ray drive, which yeah, again initially saving a, a Blu-ray maybe. drive that they probably manufacture for next to nothing. So they may be saving <laughs> twenty-five bucks in production on it. Yeah, at most, but like yeah, so then you know them undercutting undercutting it by like one hundred and fifty to two hundred bucks. Like Sony might be in a really good spot to say, yeah, we've got we've got the high tier console, we got we have a high tier and a low tier, and they're both cheaper than the competition's versions of them. Mm. Uh, again, we won't know until the prices come out, but we did see there was some some price rumors uh, leaked uh, a couple weeks ago. Every week um, for the last three months, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, yeah. The, the the veracity of those we don't know, but it could be. Uh, we're, we live in interesting times for sure, and I'll be interested to see um, when this September event happens. That the talk is is that the. The PlayStation is going to launch November twentieth uh, with with Black Ops uh, because they're doing the promotional deal at the same time, yeah. uh, and that Microsoft will launch the Xbox two weeks before that, so first or second week of November, which usually is around the fifth year. Yeah, the fifth, which is in line in, in line with what they've done in the past with their previous two consoles. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why change it? Yeah, exactly. I mean seems to work out well for them and uh, the best thing about it is that uh, all my backwards compatible crap now will still work so all my my xbox one will still be fine and all my 360 backwards compatible stuff will still be fine not so much the case with playstation 5 it seems no very much and not. it's very weird way to have it semi-announced as well, well it looks like it's more of a leak than an announcement or, or just kind of someone's just put it in there based on what they've been asked to put it's, it's some did, internal someone the did their job and yeah. playstation forgot to tell them not to do their job or, or playstation told yep. yeah, play, yeah playstation definitely forgot to tell someone but yeah. yeah so uh yeah ubisoft have it was in an faq for the game was it uh for, for, they're talking about far cry um uh, Val, Val, Far Cry 6 Val, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and um, Watch Dogs Legion about like backwards compatibility and how that kind of PS4 to PS5 support is going to work and that sort of stuff so there was they had some FAQs there to sort of head off people who didn't mm. know what, what the what the game was basically yeah this news story literally has nothing in it yeah I know sorry <laughs> it's a video it's a useless one um, that's okay I mean yeah. it's so, very it's, God, Gods and Monsters got a new name did it? That's that's in the article. Yeah, well, I know that. 
Uh, it doesn't say. Oh, that's helpful. It's going to be revealed uh, later. Uh, oh, Lord, that's I'll a be, juicy I'll teaser. Be, I'll be in Ubisoft's 2020 events. Oh, that's right. They do keep doing those. And, and no one looks, See, they're doing it. Microsoft isn't. Yeah, well, to be fair, the Ubisoft ones have not been worth watching. They're all just terrible. <laughs> From what I understand yeah. about the backward compatibility, uh, backward compatibility of the PlayStations, is uh, it's not very much. But I've heard that the PlayStation Three was such a different technology that cell it's, architecture. Yeah, I've heard it called the cell architecture. Mm. I don't know what that means, but the PlayStation Three specifically is meant to be extremely difficult to um, replicate in backwards compatibility. Yes, so it's not really a surprise so. that they're going to go, oh, it's just PlayStation 4 only. The other thing yeah. I want to say on this article is, again, I spend a lot of time on Twitter. It's interesting to see the Sony ponies and what they have to say. And a lot of them seem <laughs> to say, I don't even care about backwards compatibility. And I think if they actually had legitimate backward compatibility, they might change their mind. But... It's interesting because I wonder what the average gamer thinks about backward compatibility. For us, it's great. We can go back mm. to the games, mm. you know, for you guys, hundreds, maybe even thousands of games that you've yeah, bought it, it's, for the previous it's gen. Thousands um, of games that aren't useless now. That's the thing. Yeah, it's but I wonder for the average console. gamer, does that does that even matter? You know, the people that buy their Call of Duties and Fifas, they're not going back. So... So this was it's it's funny how history repeats itself, right? Because this conversation was the exact same one that we had when the PlayStation Three first came out, and the very first sixty gig models had the chip in it that allowed you to play PlayStation Two games on it. Mm, they would no, not the sixty gig. The sixty was the sixty gig the big one. This big one. The big yep. one did not have it. The smaller one had it. Wait, really? Yep. Oh, yep. No, sorry, the, the it, it twenty gig like, one had it, and the sixty oh. gig one did not. Really? Trust me. Okay, yeah. I'll take you. I'll take you. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, because um, I got the big one. Because I'm like, yeah, I'll get the big one. I'll have all the things. It's seven thousand dollars, but I'll get the big <laughs> one because it'll have everything. Yeah. Oh, I can't play my PS2 games. Oh, my mate can. That's weird. What did you get? Oh, the twenty gig one. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yikes. Yeah, yeah. So the um. Yeah. So originally, this was a bit where they said, okay, the first run of the PlayStation stuff will have this chip in it that will allow you to play PlayStation 2 games but because backwards compatibility is not a requested feature we're just not going to mm. do it uh, and they said the same thing about rumble and controllers they said it was a last gen feature and then they brought it back because people complained I think backwards compatibility is the same thing I think that in terms of selling a console to people backwards compatibility is not a huge selling point unless you make it one and I think that Microsoft have realised is that they can lean on it in a way that makes sense by saying yeah things are backwards compatible but also they're backwards compatible with game pass so you don't have to dig out your old discs you can actually mm-hmm. we'll, you know we'll put red dead redemption into game pass which again when those things got added to backwards compatibility for the um for the xbox one you know uh, red dead redemption and black ops saw huge surges in play and uh, in, uh, in player bases again because mm-hmm. people had access to it yeah. And it was easy for them. And making it available digitally and just always there, or always as such. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry for the audio listeners. That's, I think, air quotes there. Um, or always available, I think, makes the difference because you can talk about it and also gives them that good generational story of, oh, you know, you can play four generations of Xboxes games, etc. That's, et that's a great story. And yeah. That, and that is a legitimately mm-hmm. good story. Yeah. It, like, it, it, it's, a, it's a really good marketing piece that, that Sony just can't do. Uh, and part of that is because of the cell architecture, but some of it is like you know they could they could get PlayStation One and Two games running on the system if they really wanted to. Where you know, it's not that difficult. <laughs> I mean, if they I really... mean they did it for the PS Four, exactly. So if the PS Four is backwards mm. compatible for the PS Five, th- there shouldn't be as much of a stretch as they seem to be making it out to be. That like mm. as, it, it doesn't shouldn't be as difficult as they seem to be making it out to be. I mean, at the at, at the very mo- at least they could do, like if they really game came down to it, they could essentially just solder the chip from the previous con- from the old consoles into <laughs> the new ones, which is essentially what they did with their first runs of PS3s. They pretty much put the chip exactly in it. They're like, well, we have enough space in this giant monolith of a console, for, we have some extra space that we can put in here, and you can use the CPU power for it. So we'll just have it running on it when it needs to run the backwards compatible games. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. it's not practical, and I know there's hundreds of reasons, and I'm sure I'll get comments about it. But 
yeah, I think that Sony are betting that it isn't a thing and that essentially the PS4 is where they hit their stride because the PS3 was a, a bit of a misstep for them. They sort of pulled it together towards the end, but they did not... They, they, they lost hands down to the 360. Uh, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and I think that with the PS4 being such a huge success, they're banking on the fact that most of their player base have only played PS4. Like, statistically, if you look at the number of PS4s that have been sold, the number of people who are primary gamers have probably only played a PS4 and maybe like a PlayStation 2 or 3 like back in the day but probably didn't even own one maybe maybe they have one they're aging into it so anyone who's nostalgic for stuff will be PlayStation 4 players uh, and they you know they'll lean on PS Now for all the sort of emulation and streaming stuff for older games if they need to but I think that they, they're saying that backs compatibility is only important in that we want people to upgrade but not feel like they're being cut off and we don't really care about it otherwise Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. It's tough. It's we're such a non-standard gaming bunch that it's hard. Yeah. To, it's hard for me to think of this from another perspective. It yeah. really is. Like the the argument is that a lot of for ha- not having backwards compatibility is a lot of the newer games are using like the new controller tech with the haptic feedback and stuff and like th- that that's why that's why accessories aren't backwards compatible because we can't utilize these new features with the older controllers and and mm-hmm. that you don't get the new things if you're still relying on the older tech yeah um, which is Microsoft's problem quote unquote yeah. that's the problem at every transition to a new a new generation the same this argument one more so always, though because I, I see your every, point about it, the hardware but people always say the same thing about the games well the prob- it's more of a problem this time because the games the two two skews of the games aren't being designed one skew is mm. that scales yeah. mm. well like PC version you know. yeah like PC version but it's uh, from what I hear it's more difficult than right. than it is on a PC Although PCs are hell because so many different configurations of hardware, that yeah, that that this it will get held back. Conversions will get held back because of it. Is what I'm hearing, but mm. you know, I don't know how. We'll see, right. Yeah, how much weight there is behind that statement, but it's again, we just don't know. We just don't know enough. We just we don't know enough about any of these consoles yet. Which is weird, right? Because they come out in November, allegedly. It's, it's two months away. Mm. Like it's it's eight and weeks. We don't know, and we don't know anything. We, like we don't know release dates. We don't. We we barely mm. know launch lineups. Like we don't know price. Do you think it would know, be different if we weren't having the coronavirus? Yes, I think it might be a little bit different, but I don't know how much. Like I, we might we might already know by now. But with this game of chicken that they're playing, they've been doing this for. A, I don't mean the I, price of the console, but like the I think lineups we would know, and the specs. I think we would know everything, everything. Oh, yeah. by this point yeah. because they would have had an E3 conference. Yes, yeah, you're right. They would have had an E3 show that they prepared and they would have announced stuff there. That's true. But what if the E3 briefing was like an extended version of the July 2020? Whatever it was, the it one would have been all, Halo. It will, it, the E3 briefing would have worked better because um, people didn't have to make a e3 conference briefing and then cancel that mm. like and, and then, then have to change it and rejig it event. for this online specific event okay with because because you could you, you can't really take what you were going to do at e3 and just go okay we'll just cut and paste this into our xbox 2020 july show like it, 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 it would have been really hard to get a forza car into uh, phil spencer's living room they couldn't get it coming out of the you know <laughs> dropping yeah. down from the ceiling <laughs> yeah. Keanu just works in the yeah, frame. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're breathtaking. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we best move on to. I can see Alex is getting antsy because he needs to go kick his baby or something. <laughs> Whatever it is you do with kids, I don't know what you do with kids. Don't drop them. further establishes not to be a parent. <laughs> hey, I would be a great parent. Probably it's am. Debatable. 
Uh, what have you been apparent. playing, Alex? Alright, well... Oh, I got to the top of the list. Well, so last that's, night that's I... That's how that works when I ask yes, what you've been doing. I know, I was not at the top of the list. But anyway... No. I played uh, I Battlefield Hardline me. last night, and a couple of people saw that... Uh, that's not in your card, please don't talk about it. That's not, but <laughs> I unlocked my best ever achievement. Like in terms of true achievement score, 2053, unless it's dropped. Ooh, that's for completing that's 25 break, yeah. competitive matches. 150 game yeah. score, 2053. So. Is wow. that DLC? Uh, I think it's a title update. Title update? Yeah. 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 Their, their yeah. DLC packs in Battlefield Hardline are weird. It's. Um, yep. Yeah, there's a lot of DLC packs, but a lot of the achievements are title updates. Anyway. So I just wanted to mention that real quick. But I, f- I finished in the break uh, from having a uh, baby daughter. I finished Wolfenstein 2, including all the DLCs. Before you ask, no, I didn't do any mine Laban because ain't nobody got time for that. Fair enough. Did you learn how to become a dad? Not from Wolfenstein 2, I didn't. <laughs> that ending. <laughs> the ending? Yes, I also know that ending. <laughs> ha 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 for us all. <laughs> Yeah, what does the ending have to do with becoming anyway, a dad? Anyway, don't worry about it. Just yes. I, I I didn't say the ending. I just referred to being a dad in Wolfenstein. I, I mean, didn't he, say he, anything about fair, the ending. He's a, he's a father to be. It's slightly different. Yeah. Okay. The pregnant or wife. You have to play crazy. young I was, I, I was talking more about kicking puppies than that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. Was it kicking puppies? No. They attack no, you. Was the it? dogs attack you in Wolfenstein too. You got to. You yeah, know. it's self-defense. They come onto your lawn, so you've got to kick them. Yeah, fair enough. It, anyway. All right. So I finished the I Am Death <laughs> Incarnate run of the entire game, including the collectibles, did the DLCs, as I said, no mine Laban. The, I said this before, the game is excellent. The story is excellent in the main game. The DLCs, eh, whatever, I mean, take it or leave it. Um, I played the DLCs because I got it on sale, and I'm obviously working on completion percentage, so... Yeah, it's... Uh, pretty cheap now get it uh, yeah, anyway play the story just the main game if you're interested it's a great game the other game I played that I want to talk about is Observation so this one is in the Game Pass uh, Tarragon recommended this game to me um, I actually pushed forward the time of playing this because I needed one more Game Pass quest to get the 1000 pointer um, for a week or one more weekly challenge to get that to 100%. So, mm-hmm. uh, what you do, you, you're in space, you play as Sam, the system admin and maintenance AI, and it plays differently to your kind of space mystery game in that, <clears throat> excuse me, in that you're the AI system rather than a character on board the spaceship. So, it's like right. people talk to you and go, Sam, can you do this? And you go and do that thing. So, the gameplay is kind of a, a little bit clunky at points, but it... Um, really just serves as a vehicle to move the story forward you know you're flying around in a little sphere and opening up hatches and doing things but the story of what happens in this game is really really good i don't want to say any spoilers but it it didn't go the way i thought it was going it's um yeah anyway play the game it's free on game pass really really good i think it was valak that said it was up there for his game of the year as well so, fair, I know you guys. I was going to say, to be fair, I know you guys <laughs> roast Valak a lot, but it's it's a really, really good game. It's the story, man. The story. When uh, if someone does play it and want to have a chat to me about the story, yeah, definitely send me a message. What's the uh, What's the list look like for it? It's it's fine. It's fine. I Terragon said to me, play Lots it. Collectibles. Yeah, yeah, quite a few. Eighty five yeah. collectibles, but over a six to eight hour game. 85 is not that much. get past the two points of no return, you're locked out of the previous area. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I, I followed a guide. Um, Tarragon said to me, play it without a guide, but I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't want to play the game for another five so you, hours. You have a kid, you haven't got time for that. <laughs> don't have time anymore, yeah. <laughs> what are you on about? You have all the gaming time in the world, as you said to us. Nah. I've got less time, but I've still got time. I, there's a whole bunch of other games I can talk about, but don't really bear mentioning. Uh, I got 1,815 gamer score this week. 
Not bad. Nice. Yep, still okay, working okay. on getting that completion percentage up. Decent size. This is okay size. Bad. You're bad and you should feel bad, Cameron. Um, now you tell me what you've been playing since you feel so bad. No, no, I just think... Oh, <laughs> nah. Just chain. He's moved up on the list, Cameron. Come on, go for I it. I see... Kirby, what are you talking about? You're next on the list. Cameron, it's my show. Oh. <laughs> Play that card, why don't we? Um, all right, so Battlefield Free. We did some boosting this week. Alex was there. I was there. Alex, Alex was having good laugh to himself when I was trying to get DLC achievements. Imagine yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, that. He didn't that. install the DLC. Yes. Oh, that's clever. He, he bought it. He just didn't have it installed so no 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 i didn't own two pits of the dlc oh okay, okay. so i've been i've been picking them up when they were free but apparently not all of them he was getting real um, mad to uh, not unlocking because i unlocked for everyone <laughs> I, was, I was just else. like i just can't understand it and then he was last it. and he was like it was almost like he was having a go at us i'm like mate what do you want what you know tried turning it off and on again made sure it was plugged in you know all the uh, and then Made sure you own the content. Uh. I think that's the third one on the list. And then Mad Rocket Dance, he's like, you have the DLC installed, yeah? And Cameron's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah do you? <laughs> oh, go check. I'm just like, Not these installed. title updates are of the DLC, aren't they? No. Uh. But, um, yeah, so he spent $30 getting the other season pass, that, uh, season pack. Yeah, that'll do it. That was great. Uh, did that. Did some Friday the 13th. Uh, helped Drellza and PV get the phd in murder nice so basically i just went to a lot, whole lot uh whole lots of spots and just died in different ways over and over again i think there's 58 different deaths so i think we did that for like eight hours oh, wow man. yeah no uh but saying that like got a fair chunk done unlocked i think seven achievements that day that's which is good. pretty good because that game's very very grindy very grindy 200 hours plus I'm probably not going to finish it. Uh, Sunset Overdrive, PC. Been playing a lot of that. Finished the story in uh, two days. Uh, basically started going for the DLC. Great game. Absolutely love Sunset. Still one of my favorites of the generation. However, uh, PC... Uh, I love it. it didn't... Um, ins- was it Insomniac that made that? Yes. Yeah, yes, Insomniac made it. They got bought by Sony, didn't Sony. they? Sony, yep. No. Unfortunately, but they yeah. also do Ratchet and Clank, so it's not super surprising. And it may it makes sense. Will not be any uh, Sunset Overdrive two on uh, Xbox no. then, probably. But saying saying the that the PC port is a lot more gi- um, glitchy. Okay. Unfortunately, I found myself uh, once a night at least falling through um, different parts of the world. Did you have that part of the game downloaded though? Yeah, are you definitely. Sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Definitely. You, well, had you purchased that part of the game? Uh, I think it's Game Pass. So no, that might be the issue. That yeah. might be the issue. You haven't actually bought the game, so. <sighs> okay. Mm. Uh, saying that, challenges are easy. I haven't finished all of them yet, but I don't know what uh, Aftos complains about. No, he's not complaining that the challenges are hard. He's complaining that he did the challenges early, bought terrible weapons, and now he can't do the. The score attack. Yeah. On the plus side, him complaining has taught me which weapons I should and shouldn't buy as my playthrough. So <laughs> yes. we all learn. <laughs> buy the T and, T and Teddy. Yep, got that. Um, the, yep, yeah, the, got the copter gun, the yep. um, acid spray, spray bottle, and the um, hairspray. Acid sprinkler. I guess sprinkler I've got the acid hairspray. sprinkler. I need to buy the the turret copter. And I need to buy the uh, hairspray bomb. I've been saving yep. it for. Hairspray is yep. hands down the best weapon, and used to equip like a burning mod on it or whatever yeah. the things are called also the getting the band back together is the best spot to grind for yes. the uh level five okay you just, just keep on doing the drums over that's right over. it's in the solution for getting 10 levels to uh, 10 weapons to level five perfect but is it 10 on the xbox one version yeah. it's 20 it's, on it's pc two, two achievements once for 10 once for 20 oh is it okay i wasn't sure if there was one on uh xbox been a while but uh yeah been going through that um hopefully i'll get the dlc done this week depending if time permits but yeah absolutely love it absolutely love humor in the game uh i showed aftos the ending to sunset tv which was their tie-in which I think it was brandon he, or something yeah yeah 
Love Brandon. That I, I just love the marketing behind that. Absolute genius, but I won't spoil that. Uh, Creature in the Well. I completed this. I got to one point in the game. I spent eight hours. Probably not eight hours, but... Eight hours stuck on a single level. <laughs> I, I spent one day, like, trying to get through this level. Mm-hmm. Then I went back, finally got the fun stuff, and realized this is easy now. Yep. We did, we did say, hey, did you make sure you have all the upgrades and weapons? And you were like, yeah, don't worry about it. I, 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 I paid for all of them. Definitely, the definitely have the upgrades. Definitely definitely have the upgrades. But, um, yeah, went back, finally got it done. Um, yeah. Uh, and, of course, the last upgrade that I needed in the whole campaign while Kirby was in the, <laughs> Kirby was in the party, went back to the... Um, Idiot. Gunsmith? Gunsmith? <laughs> He's like, man, can't find this core to upgrade for the final achievement to get all the cores. Can't figure it out. Where is it? Went back to the alligator. <laughs> oh, I haven't got the one from the alligator yet. Whoopsie. Well, you didn't talk to the... Al- oh, my no, God. No, he didn't. <laughs> next, next to the upgrade station. Yep. yep. The one that's yep. literally there that you talk, you can talk to whenever you need to. Yep. Like, very, very first thing, yep. Oh, boy. Okay. Wow. I mean, I'm glad you got it done, because I wouldn't have thought you would have. Yeah, I I was struggling for a while there. That's it. But yeah, got it done. I wanted to get it done before I left Game Pass, and now it's out of Game Pass, so yeah. Alright. Um, Redeemer, Enhanced Edition. Mm. Honestly, just what I needed. Like, my week has been very hectic, and just filling up paperwork, and just absolutely just thinking my brain's out. Redeemer is a really nice top-down uh, hack and slash game. Like just uh, absolutely, just not think, just rush through. Uh, the only two achievements. <laughs> yes, exactly my place Run and or go. Um So I got this game pretty much done over a day and a half, uh, minus two achievements, which is I have to go back and just finish four levels uh, with no deaths, which. I think the only one that was I was having trouble with was uh, 15, but I only did one run of it, so... Um, that's just going past traps and that, where it's the only level you can really not just rush through. So you're uh, Saying game. that... <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly it. Um, everything else was parry, 300 times. Uh, what is it? Parry, 300 times, certain amount of kills executions that kind of stuff which is very cumulative through the playthrough um everything was basically unlocked before i got to the final boss which i you know you think 300 executions and that for a six to eight hour game eh, maybe maybe not but yeah that's fine cool. uh getting to my last game of the week one that i did not realize that was in my tag from 2015 on the xbox one version <laughs> and that arena I've heard of that. This. Also, I heard it was shut down this... recently. Things like five uh, days later. Yeah, six six of September. Oh, six. Yeah. Yep. But saying that, I had four achievements starting off. Uh, in two nights with Adrian's help, I've managed to get. I think it's sixteen out of thirty. Yeah, but how much is the chiropractor going to cost? <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, as soon as he's done his run, he's giving me the good weapons. Oh, that helps. Um, so. He he showed me this method by using a second account and buying items um, to get something called Ultimate Bucky, which if you just keep on spamming for other matches, you can easily win a match in about 45 seconds. So 30 seconds of loading, 45 seconds of gameplay, a minute and 15... Uh, yeah, sorry, like a yep, minute 15 in total per match. Times that by 200. You got your Cronus running? That's I wish I wish you could Cronus this. This is unfavorable fortune, unfortunately. Oh, well. Times that by two hundred is how much? Uh, times it's uh, I'd say four hours roughly. Two hundred and fifty minutes, four hours and ten minutes. Okay, not far off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I it's the, exactly that much every time. Which yeah, slight variance. Probably we we five hours. it was forty seven to forty eight seconds per match from what we've been five hours to be uh, safe. You could do it. Um, yeah, saying that the only achievement I'm concerned about is getting to level 30. 
saying that I've managed to get from level 6 to level 12 in probably like 3 hours of gameplay. I think if I just spend all Saturday doing this, it's definitely achievable. Um, and then I can start on the Maddens. <laughs> the Maddens that you also forgot you <laughs> having tag. I really feel you know, like you know the worst, this you is know? just key in showing that this needs to be a default <laughs> setting of yeah. please tell me when the games I own are having server okay. closures because Cameron had no idea he played these games. <laughs> the worst bit of this, though, is I, I'm adamant that the uh, previous game share partner I had before Adrian played this on my account. I've never... Like, I, 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 I put it up and I'm like, I've run. never... S- I've never seen this game ever. No, but my game share partner used to live yeah. a street over yeah. and we used to always have our consoles together and play games together. So it was like... Oh, I games were they call it these days. I don't know what games you're playing, Playboy Bunny. Oh, but yeah, uh, 2560 for the week. Uh, probably just spend the rest of the week playing Amec Arena. Yeah, fair enough. All right. What about you, Kirby slash Matt? I'll go next, just because... I... Alright, so, I got pretty chinky this weekend. And, uh... <laughs> God damn it. Okay. And I um, <laughs> rented a tag that had some Chinese games on it. It had specifically Mr. Pumpkin Adventure, uh, Your Toy, Dying Reborn... World 2, Hunting Boss, and Candleman with the DLC. There's 5,500 gaming score from those. Um, reasonably easy. Your Toy, the key achievement, took me two attempts. Um, it's very salty when you deliberately a- <laughs> added me in the chat to go, hey, guess what? Wasn't even trying to try. I Shut up. Literally, dude. the second time I was like, okay, I just, I'm just going to farm it at the end. I just want to get through it so at least I know I've got it done and this is all I need to focus on. Oh, that's the key. Oh, cool. Mm. Um, very much along those lines. Uh, my game share partner came over and also played these games. Fog. <laughs> he got it first try. Mm. Not even kidding. First attempt. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, that sounds like Fog. That was. That was very. I was like, wow. Did he go to the first or the second light? He went to the first light on the right. Oh, okay. First light on the right, which was the exact same spot where I got mine, and also the exact same spot where Sangria's got his. Which time? But don't say first. Second. Oh, man. I'm convinced that the first, because I reckon it was the first light on the left. I'm pretty sure it was 17 times that I reloaded it because I, I made a comment on this particular achievement <laughs> yeah. and I haven't unsubscribed to future comments just so I can see how many times it took other people yeah. it takes everyone else heaps yeah. the, you the, just you got some the issue with intervention this looking. version the issue with this version is that there is no pause menu so you can pause and go back to the main menu and restart it that way and have another attempt um, it, it doesn't have a pause menu at all you have to quit to the um, dashboard completely and reload, relaunch and reload the game. So, the the, the two attempts <coughs> where I didn't get it takes you quite a bit to get back into the game. Probably still took less time than my... Probably <laughs> still took less time than it took you just quitting. Hmm. But that, that kind of threw me off to the like, okay, now pause and go back to... Okay, pause. Um, Aftos made a good comment. It's just because... Uh, you know, when you're playing games in China, you could be shut down by the government at any point, so you can't, don't have time to pause. Yeah, no, that was it's, it's Chinese, Chinese police state. We can't have them getting ideas about pausing the surveillance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everything else is was relatively easy. Candleman, yeah. That Candleman was the only one um, with one stupid level, really dumb level. Level eight, the final, uh, chapter eight, the final level. There's essentially a bit where you're being chased by ghosts and you have to stand on a button on a moving platform and I just I died a lot of times there because I didn't kite the ghosts very well and I don't remember having the difficulty the first time so I'm thinking maybe my buggered up eyes have affected that but aside from that the game was was easy enough took me like three three hours three and a half hours maybe to get through everything um really I think it's a really 
I hated it as I was playing it. I hated it because I hate watching guides for games like that and I knew I was going to watch a guide and because mm. I just feel like antsy and I just want to get it done because I'm, I know I'm watching a guide <coughs> I can do it quickly. But like from a mechanics perspective, it's a really well done game. The mm, fact that yeah. all of your wax from previous lives stay on the ground so that you can use that as a as like a, it's a guiding a guiding line it's your breadcrumbs back to the safe path or you know where is a good place to stand stuff like that really well designed i think the other mechanics like the fact that fire kills you makes perfect sense the like that the, mm. the light in the, the dlc levels melts you quicker makes perfect sense it's brilliant like it's it's a really well done game um, except it was in Chinese, so I was quite scared the whole time. <laughs> There's something happening with that lighthouse in Chinese, and it was terrifying. Um, and I put a clip in the Discord of me finishing the ver- the final level of the base game, and the amount of wax I had left. This is my I I needed yeah. one life because I'm a champion, but I was he could have he could have looked at me funny, and I would have run out of wax and died. <laughs> if I had to light another collectible candle after that point. That's it, done. game over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, before I did the DLC in Candleman, I basically set myself up for my big milestone. So, I got into a Vici Invector and started grinding away at the achievement. I was at... Um, I had to delete my save to do some online trickery with a disc version to get an achievement. Um, so, I'd lost most of my progression. So, um, I was at about 20 or 30% when I started the day um, working towards this thing took me like two hours maybe two and a half hours to get to 96% Um, at 96% I launched another game called Gift of Parthax got uh, an achievement for dying in that game and then went back to Avicii Invector invited lots of people to a party I invited uh, well Matt was offline so I didn't invite him initially but I invited Cameron (laughs) Uh, Tarragon, Brad, I was, and I think Alex, because I saw Alex post in the in a different Discord about playing Rocket League. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll invite him, and then Matt got an invite as well eventually. Um, I'd sent a few invites out, and the only person who accepted quickly was Brad. And my thought was, oh, great. Just me and Brad. <laughs> uh, celebrating my milestone. Just the two of us. I, hey, I, sent, I, another I told you the sent another invite to Cameron <laughs> Tarragon was like did you send me an Xbox invite I'm like oh yeah I'm about to hit a milestone just hoping you you know you could be in the party and we could celebrate together it'd be really nice because you guys are sort of you, like I wouldn't want to hit the milestone with anyone else except obviously mm. Aftos who was offline and wasn't nah. talking in Discord so I didn't invite him <laughs> Yeah. otherwise I would have and I feel kind of bad that he wasn't there for it but anyway we got the milestone uh, posted it in the Discord with lovely picture and waited. <laughs> and we waited. <laughs> and Alex goes, Oh, good job, mate. That's awesome. And I waited. I said, Is it a good job, Alex? <laughs> yeah, you, you got your milestone. Oh, you beat it well, well above time. Yeah, but Alex, is it a good milestone? Eventually, he clued onto the fact that I'd scored a one pointer and landed gracefully on one million and one gamer score with an achievement called one million um, <laughs> and my last words on it were I'm going to let it slide for this this I, milestone I feel like though he would have been a lot more upset if he was the one that noticed and we didn't have to point it, it out really out hard it. yeah I, nah. I, you know what I feel like Kobe's getting special treatment here everybody else you just like nah, nah. nah not exactly no, I, think, I, I may or may not have said this on the podcast before but if you put um, uh, like if I'm on Twitter and I see someone's hit 500,000 gamer score and it says like 500,320 I won't like it I won't write a comment nothing yeah I'm, yeah I'm, no because it doesn't count you've got to hit it on the dot there's a million different story two million different story but like come on man 100,000 200,000 planted out be a good cuz so Cameron <laughs> I, I had this planned for probably 20,000 games or 30,000 games or something like that Cameron and I were in great discussion it. about whether it would have been more annoying to you if I just got anything less so the achievement for the milestone was worth 60 points we were wondering whether 
it would be more annoying if I landed exactly one over, but obviously it would have been planned and I think you would have ex respected the fact that it had been planned. Or if I had just been, any any time I'm less than 60, I get this achievement and then I break the milestone. We would, big discussion about which one would have been more annoying mm. to you. So you do 1 so, million and 20 gamer score. It could have been 1 million 20, could have been 1 million and 37, like any anything less than 60 <laughs> to a million I get that achievement and cross the threshold I feel like that would have been more annoying to you because it feels like I've cared less whereas no, I feel like we've... You, you, could, you get special treatment for one million gamer score disappointed okay I mean, one million one hundred thousand I'm going to stuff up just for you I mean it does I don't like, like it. it I told you it's not a one <laughs> million <to me. laughs> All right. it's a nice um, um, it's a nice palindrome at least it was, it was and that was, it was good and it is a it is a good achievement to get for the one pointer as well. Is the <laughs> beginning of the ends or something, or the end of the yeah. beginning, something like that. But yeah, um, after that, I'll just quickly touch on two titles: uh, Rock Zombie. This is a terrible, terrible game, and for a very, very, very long time, had issues with signing in. Oh uh, right, yeah, I remember that. As of late, I tried it. So I tried it that day. Let me in straight away. Quit the game relaunched it <laughs> let me in straight away again got an achievement quit the game relaunched it let me in straight away I think whatever the sign in issues were have been fixed so if you bought that on the cheap and were unable to play it it's a terrible game you shouldn't play it but you can play it and get achievements now it seems that whatever the issues were have been fixed and because that was like that was my last chance I'm going to uninstall it if it doesn't work mm. and it worked and I don't know why and I wish I did but yeah, so there's that. And finally, the brand new Radalaka coming out this week, Roommates. Now, I watched a friend of the show, Kronos, do a stream of this uh, from his the Steam version of this game. Um, really, really interesting visual novel. Super duper easy. Um, you, you may be able to cut down the playthroughs if you plan your stat building well enough because some... Some of the romance targets have overlapping stats, so you could probably, like, double up and sort of cover both. No, but that wouldn't work because your conversations... Uh, I guess unless you built both relationships during the same playthrough. Regardless, you need at most eight playthroughs because um, each... There's two playable characters. Each one has four romance targets. If you're skipping all the dialogue and know exactly what choices to make, the playthrough takes maybe 20 minutes... So it's like a three-hour game at most. Mm. Um, if you're playing through properly once, it'll obviously take you longer, but it's a reasonably good game. Uh, second to complete it, and I knew I was going to be second because I started it. I, got, I was the first to start it, and I'm like, man, I have to go to work tomorrow, and I'm not going to stay up long enough to finish this. So I posted it in a different chat. I'm like, first to start this game. Can't wait to be beaten to the completion. <laughs> Left work yesterday. Yep, someone beat me to the completion. Ah, yep. But he has not completed all of the Radalika games, so that makes me king of the baby games, number one on the Radalika leaderboard once the again. Garbage king. Long Isn't that what they rain. call the uh, the raccoon in Donut County? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Or is that just the raccoons yeah. in general? I can't remember. Uh, Alex, are you calling me a coon? <laughs> no, I'm calling you king of the garbage. Whoa! 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 Wow. Whoa! Write that time down. You cannot have that in there. Nah, I might just leave it. We're talking, we're talking about the cheese, yeah? Not, any, not anymore, no, Cameron. No, I'm talking about the um, South Park the ca South Super Villain? Yeah. yeah, that's Cartman's alter ego. Cartman's, Cartman's superhero, yeah. The Coon. I played the Coon. Oh, no, I didn't play you the know, Coon. You know, I played okay. with the Coon in Fractured Butthole. Okay. I was going to say, Nikita's been playing through Fractured Butthole all week, and I completely forgot that as there is isn't <laughs> even tied to... Actually, now. <laughs> Cameron, I completely, I completely, I completely forgot that there was an achievement tied to playing as Token or playing as a character. Yep, <laughs> looking like Token on Mastermind difficulty. That's a really hard one. <laughs> yeah, it's also massive. Just like real life. Y yes, it's, yeah, that what that is what they <laughs> say. Yes, it's like playing the game on hard mode. Oh jeez. Moving along. Right, we'll you, you, get, you get less money from battles and stuff. Uh, yeah, so this week I got... Sorry, I forgot it was me talking because I was 
um, distracted by my yeah. my uh, position on the rather like a leaderboard. I got 10,266. So I'm now already 5,000 above that 1 million milestone. Whew. Goes quick. It certainly does. Catching up on that. Oh, no, I'm not. But uh, <laughs> look, end of next year, <laughs> I will hopefully have a better milestone than 1 million game score. Okay. Um, okay. All right, so it just leaves me, I suppose. Um, Certainly does. So save the best for last. Absolutely. Uh, so I, uh, speaking of the best, I played Sherlock Holmes: Crimes and Punishment Redux. How different is that from the original? Literally, not any different at all. It's ex- it's a literally oh. they just re-uploaded the game. Like, hey, new list, new list, new oh. Sherlock, I guess. So okay. wasn't it wasn't it licensing yes. issues or something? Yeah, it was his. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, of no publishing issues. The publishing publisher was with like Frog Eyes that's or it. yeah, Frogwares is the name of the studio, but it's Frogwares. the publisher's someone else. It was, it was like Big Ben or something. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they got into a fight with them, so they republished it themselves. Uh, so it's the same game. Um, you know, Sherlock Holmes is great. I enjoy, I enjoy all of those games. Um, I, I like all sort of Frogwares, slightly ropey but kind of interesting narrative things that they do. Uh, Smash through that. I mean, I'd already seen the cases twice before because there was a 360 version and Xbox One version of the original. Yeah, did uh, both of those. Yep. Uh, I did. <sighs> finished up Devious Dungeon 2, finally. Um, that game gets kind of hard towards the end. Um, yeah, it's just it, it's just mash your face against the wall until you've got enough money to upgrade yourself. Yeah, like pretty much. Really... There are a lot of enemies who just suddenly have like like massive projectile spam that's really hard to dodge. Mm-hmm. So you kind of just hope you get a good level where you can kind of sneak around them or avoid them. Uh, bosses weren't too difficult. I beat the last boss with a slither of health using the last sort of trick that you can use with the, um, the skeletons. Uh, also played a bit more of Hitman 2. I got most of the sniper missions finished. Uh, there's one... I, I think it's, I got all the challenges done for one of the areas. Uh, I'm still working on the Siberia level. It's it's hard to go back to because, I get like I've said every week, it's it's... It's good. It's really, really good. But it's all, you're playing a lot of the same content, and those challenges, getting level twenty mastery, involves repeating the same stuff over and over again, uh, and just doing it slightly differently, which is fine. But I have so much other stuff to play that it's hard to invest. Uh, I also played Riptide GP Renegade because uh, for some reason I was like, "Hey, this is good game." Yeah, it's a good game actually. I'm really bad at it because it's a racing game. But uh, I'm having a pretty good time with it. I, I'm not. I, I quite enjoy the racing side of things. I'm not really a big fan of the whole doing tricks and trying to like, you know, get your boost like boost score <laughs> up and all that sort of stuff. Um, just because I'm used to the timing, I'm like, oh yeah, we'll do a level two trick, and then I just like face plant into the water and die. Are you are you finding the tricks not difficult? Or? I mean, doing the tricks is not that difficult, but it's finding like the right trick for the right time. Like, yeah. I because you kind of have to get the experience of how long you're going to be in the air and how long a trick takes to do. And, and getting the landing, so you're not... So, yeah, yeah, exactly, so you don't, like, fail and, and lose all your score. Uh, and the freestyle events, I'm just not really having a lot of fun with. But, again, it's it's a pretty short game. The only real problem I have with it is that it's, like, it's the same eight tracks over and over again, so it kind of drags. Yeah. But I'll, I'll do some more of it. Um, I've also was doing some Neverwinter. Uh, I've joined a new guild, uh, who are also some achievement hunters, which is great, because they, they understand me. So we ran through one of the harder dungeons, uh, and they basically just breezed me through it, even though I was a total scrub, which was great. So we got that finished. Got one of the finished one of the, the 200-hour DLC packs. So now I'm mm-hmm. down to three DLC packs left. Uh, um, I got one achievement, <laughs> one achievement for finishing each of them, and then there's one for there's one extra one for the oldest one that I haven't done, where it's finish it without dying, which I don't think like only like 40 people have. So that's yep. going to be a nightmare. But it's, so it's funny, you, you, like you say it, like they're not planning to add any new content ever. No, they're definitely not, Cameron. They're, this is it. They're done. They're, it's one hundred percent. Mod nineteen is going to be the last Neverwinter mod. I believe it because it's a prime number. Oh god, it's yeah, an odd no, number they're... to finish on. Yeah, no, they they need to. One day, one day they'll stop. One day they'll go out of business. One day, <laughs> I... yeah. But will the servers stay up if that happens, though? Uh, that's the question. That's why I'm trying to stay on top Who, of it. Yeah. Who's the devs for Neverwinter? Is that Perfect World? Uh, Perfect World, yeah, I think are the... Okay. Perfect World Entertainment? Yeah, because they do uh, Star Trek uh, oh, Star Trek Online, or whatever it is, as well, I think. Which has also been yeah. running forever. Oh, so. right, that thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
so yeah never never winter is there's the gift that keeps on giving i'm finally making some progress though um and i've now that i've finished some of the old content that i was stuck on i'm starting to catch up and actually get some decent gear so i'm hoping to get the older two i'm hoping to get two of the dungeons finished in the next week or so uh, and then that last one's going to be a real difficult one although allegedly they might be bringing out an easy mode for it like an easy version of it for scrubs mm -hmm. which will still count for the achievement but we'll wait have to wait and see on that one uh, i've also uh, been mm -hmm. working on the backlog for the 360 non-backwards compatible games so i finished up blade kitten which is a game that? Uh, yeah that sounds a, familiar it's a side-scrolling platformer slash brawler like really low level brawler like essentially just you just mash x to get through all the fights yeah like run and slash run and slash very much that kind of like uh but a, a lot of like wall climbing it's kind of reminiscent of um strider actually or, or that kind of um but like way way lower production values uh, i think it was made by the same people who made that um was it ty the was it Tasmanian Tiger or something? The other guy with the boomerangs? Oh, Ty yeah. the Tasmanian Tiger or something. Something along those lines? I can't... Yep, yeah, because they're doing the remake. Yeah, yeah, so I think it was... Yeah, so... Because uh, I think he had... One of his things is unlockable costume in the game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know what a, else they made? What else? Ben-Hur. Ah, there we go. Oh, yeah, they've made a lot of wow. interesting stuff that's unplayed, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so it was a fine enough game. Um, they did say at the end of it, oh, wait for episode two. I was like, yeah, I'm the wedding buddy the, this 360 <laughs> game uh apparently there was a, a there was an episode two on steam but it was a fine enough game you have to do two the, you need a collectible guide because there are a lot of collectibles to get um but the story i just i spasmoded i just skipped through all the cutscenes because i was like this is i don't care uh and there is one achievement for doing a speed run but essentially once you have all the collectibles and you've got you've bought the upgrades you can just sprint through the up levels in under five minutes each so the achievements for finishing the game in like under 90 and I think I got like 75 minutes mm -hmm. for 13 levels so yeah it's fine enough game I just had it on my backlog for ages I got stuck on one of the collectibles and so I decided this week I was going to go back and do it uh, I also finished up Gotham City Imposters finally uh, the last thing I had to do was to get 50 gold medals in the challenges uh, I thought this would be a lot harder than it was I'd been stuck on a challenge so I skipped it and just went and did the other ones and all the other ones were super easy I was like, oh, okay, it was actually just this one challenge that I had trouble with. And then when I went back to that one, eventually I got that. So yep. there's 90 challenges. There was originally 75. There's 90 challenges in the game with the title update. So you pretty much just, if you do all of the basic challenges, you'll get 40 of them or 41, I think, 41 gold medals. And that you only have to do like nine advanced levels, which aren't that difficult. Mm. They just involve a bit more shooting. Uh, so yep. smashed through that, got it all done, filed away. Uh, and I'm also working on Penny Arcade Adventures Episode 1. Um, which is okay. It is, mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you know what Penny Arcade is, they're a very, very popular webcomic. And they started the Penny Arcade Expo packs, as, as we've gone to. Although they're not associated... Never heard of it. Yeah, they're not associated with it anymore. <laughs> but, um, or at least as far as I'm aware, anyway. Uh, mm. Yeah, so uh, the game was made by Hothead, the same guys who made Death Spank. So it has very much has that sense of humor to it, like very like anachronistic, like weird things. Uh, it's set during like Victorian times, but essentially the giant, the giant, uh, one of the reoccurring characters is a uh, is a machine that juices fruit with an appendage. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, right. Yeah. So the um, yeah, the, it is is referred to as a, a fruit copulator. We'll say. Um, usually the more alliterative word, um, but you, <laughs> yeah. So um, so you have to distract them by throwing oranges at them and stuff. It's like an active time battle system with like you need to press like right trigger when they attack to block and that sort of stuff. Um, Are there any werewolves in the game? Not as far as I'm aware. Um, okay. Yeah, well, Warren, I, I haven't found Warren Z of yet, but um, but um, Just... but I but I, I think I did see a sign for a big dish of uh, beef chow mein. Uh -huh. um, uh, yeah. So right. the, again, there's, there's a lot of swear. There's a lot of swearing. Like it's really like <laughs> it's a lot of weird jokes. It's very penny arcade style of humor. Like there was a like you just go around examining stuff. And like I examined like a wagon, and it was like, and it was like a lot of people don't know this, but a man can get married to a wagon, and that was it. No useful information. No stats. No hey, find an item. Just just some random side notes that don't make any sense. Um, mm -hmm. it, the, the game is actually a little bit like 
I got actually a little annoyed with it because there's an achievement for not dying, like not having none of your characters go down or get knocked out uh, throughout the whole game. It's not a very, it's a short, it's episodic, so it's quite short. It's like five, five or six hours. Uh, but I got up to like finish the tutorial, get out to like the first like real area, and I just walked into the first enemy and I just got completely wrecked. I was like, wow, okay, this difficulty curve is off like ridiculous. After I beat that guy, everything else has been pretty easy. So I think they just kind of mess with the settings a little bit, a little too early on. I'm actually having a pretty good time with it. Uh, it is very funny. Um, it's been on my tag for ages, so I'll finish it, go on to the second one, clean those both off, and then I suppose i got another fi find another 360 game to do. It's weird they didn't make it backwards compatible, but it is what it is. I'll get my 200 points out of it. Um, and then, of course, I, I played some other stuff, but that puts me at uh, 7,530 for this week. It's very good. Very good indeed. All right, we will move on to uh, sales and sales like topics. Oh, it's just uh, uh, why? So we have, we've got one. Oh, right. Person. Sorry, I, I I saw that and I forgot about it. Um, uh, Brad, what have you been playing this week? Same as last week. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks for that. Real helpful, buddy. Really appreciate the input. <sighs> Moving from one stupid thing to another. Uh, games with gold for the month of September. Mm. They are uh, well. I mean, again, not so mu not not good for me. But that's okay. It doesn't have to be good for me. Uh, it's for, at least for the start of uh, the month. It's De Blob Two on the three hundred and sixty. Yep. And uh, the Division on the one. After that, we what Xbox original game is it? Oh, uh, was it Red Faction Two? Or was that last month? No, that was no, last that's, month. That's, that's actually a really good game. It, it is a good game. Um, um, it's Armed and Dangerous. That's it. Yep. Okay. And uh, for the second, starting in the second half of the month, it's the Book of Unwritten Tales Two on the Xbox One. Uh, unfortunately, I already own that and De Blob Two, and will never, ever, ever play The Division. <laughs> but. Oh the the un Unwritten Tales is quite a niche point-and-click adventure title. It's easy game score, but like that's not hyper-appealing. Um, I, th I, I thought it was kind of fun. Like, but it's, like, yeah. it's, it's okay, but it's not... Uh, the, the Telling someone you want to spend 20 hours playing a point-and-click adventure game? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the only issue. Is it's, it's quite long-winded. Hmm. Uh, what is it? Yeah, fifteen to twenty hours walkthrough. There is a walkthrough for it, so it's it is easy. Except there's a there's an RNG fishing achievement that I got second try, Alex. <laughs> mm. It's it, it's it's mm. pretty forgiving RNG though. It's not too yeah. bad. There is uh, and there are the humor is quite good. There is a lot of funny jokes and and the dialogue is well written. Yeah, it's pretty well written. Like I, I would say it's worth a play, but I also know it's not for everyone. Also, I've never played Unwritten Towers one, so I don't know if. Uh, yeah. yeah, I see. I see Allison's head, kind of. Just, just this the four part. Yep. Yep. Oh, I um, she was the waving. division. What? I thought she was waving. Maybe her head yeah. clipping. <laughs> no, it's the clipping background. background. It's the background is not, not very forgiving. Uh, the division. Matt said it was good because maybe more people will get on to do that twenty-seven thousand player achievement. Yeah, we could do the last stand. We need 16 people to start a game. Uh, What's the achievement in it? Uh, it's for winning 50 matches, which means you have to do it. Oh, my God. Each. And the matches aren't <laughs> short either. Uh, and so if you're going to win, you know, you better, you know, that means someone's going to lose. So that's eight yep, people so losing you've gotta it. you've got to trade. Yep. And you've got to try to get into a match. It's, disgusting. yeah, and you got to try to match up. And if there's anyone else searching, of course, it's going to ruin everything because it's all matchmaking. You can't just load in. Uh, and you can only have you can only have teams of four loading in at a time. So you want to make sure you're all on the same side to make sure it's a logistical nightmare. And it was a DLC pack, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a couple other achievements involved with it, but that's the one that really, um, really. Have you got any progress towards it yet? I have a little bit of progress. I've got a few wins, uh, maybe twelve. But again, it'll take me twelve. Okay. Yeah. That's again, more I, than I thought. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but um, now now that it's uh, back, with, oh, sorry, now that it's games with gold, at least I can double box it easier, and I don't, I, yeah. I had it on disc, so I don't have to get up and change the disc at least. So that's a yeah, positive. That's nice. <laughs> All right, uh, 
we did. Well, there's nothing obviously announced to leave Game Pass, and we probably announced the games last week that we're leaving. And I yeah. don't think there's anything like big announced that's come in. Um, there's one game like Hot Tracks or something. There was a looked like a racing game that was launching day and date into Game Pass, but I don't think think much has been said about it. It was that Drake, uh, this... Drake Hollow game that got added. Was the the only thing? Yeah, because it was supposed to come in, and then it got delayed. And so now it's come in properly. Um, four player mm. online co op, uh, achievement for not dying, achievement for beating in four player co op, I think. Mm. Um, no, Brad, we will not be playing this. <laughs> We're going to get through Strange Brigade before we think about anything else. Yeah. Have you guys started that? Yeah, uh, we started. Yeah. We couldn't unfortunately do anything because I was setting up the milestone. So last week we couldn't play because I didn't want any unplanned pops. Mm. Uh, the sales this week, though, in our game score games, we have To Vive, 50% off, $3.49. Some might say Survive. I wouldn't. Say uh, it like it says. Battleship, 60% off, $5.99. Beyond Good and Evil HD, 67% off, $3.29. Coffin Dodgers, 65% off, $4.19. Late Shift, 70% off, $3.74. Rememoried. 75% off $3.74 and Valiant Hearts The Great War 70% off $4.49 uh, Host recommendations Matt uh, I'm going to recommend so there are a lot of Assassin's Creed stuff on sale this week most of it doesn't fit really into our gamer score categories because they tend to be longer games but uh, Assassin's Creed Rogue Remastered 67% off at $9.89 highly recommended it's basically all the best parts of Assassin's Creed 4 um, mm -hmm. with some with some nice refinements it has an interesting take on the story because you play as a Templar uh, and it, it kind of condenses it down like it doesn't feel as long winded like it's kind of a, a short sharp experience that gives you pretty much everything you need from the old sort of Assassin's Creed before they went into the uh, Origins style yep yeah good game uh, Alex it's funny I've got the same uh, similar kind of recommendation to Matt there so mine is Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. It's like Far Cry 3, but actually good. And not too long-winded. 60% uh, off, five ninety nine. The humour in this game and the 80s vibe is what really sold me on the game. I, I just, I love this game. I mm. wish they'd do a sequel to it. Not to any of the other Far Cry games, just Blood Dragon. The, what, what was the rumour they were going to do with Far Cry... Was it Far Cry Blood Dragon 2? No, was it Far Cry... Blood Dragon Vietnam 2 or something like it was like it was was it? yeah it was going to be like Cyber Vietnam or something ridiculous like it was going to be like Fortunate Son but done through synth it was some <laughs> that sounds like that sounds good yeah. Fortunate Son was a song that played in the Bad Company 2 Vietnam DLC it's played in every basically every anything to do anything yeah. anytime Vietnam is shown on screen in any type of media it Fortunate Son gets played. played in the background I'm pretty yeah. sure it's a con contractual agreement yeah yeah Charlie um, don't surf I don't have a recommendation. I do have an unrecommendation. Do not buy Subject 13. It's bad. It is an easy game on sale. It is terrible. It is really bad. Either buy it and get one achievement so you can bump up my ratio, or do not buy it. Please don't don't suffer through this. I do these. I suffer through these so that you don't have to. It's it's bad. I, I cannot <laughs> recommend it to anyone. Not even a buy a rider locker at full price. Not instead. Not even uh, it's it's real. It's so bad. It's like it's good because it's so bad. Like it's the, yeah. you'd be like, oh my god, this is so awful. But it's all right because I knew it was awful. No, no. And it, it, it was just, made like, by the same yourself. people who made the Siberia games, and it, like you can oh. tell, like which is like because I quite like the Siberia, like in terms Siberia of yeah, me too. It's good compared to yeah, but the um, but yeah, the puzzles are bad. The story's bad. Um. It's really nonsensical, and then it ends with the worst minesweeper puzzle of all time. Yep, yeah, it a, does. a timed minesweeper timed puzzle. Timed minesweeper puzzle. Yeah, and you need to you need to for an achievement you need to like be not flawless but within less time, like, like yeah minutes. or something. Yeah, less than. Oh, let minutes. me guess. It's random every time, so you can't yep. just watch a guide. Oh, oh great! Yeah, and, wonderful. And there's about like there's about like thirty mines you need to find, and every time you hit a mine, it resets the puzzle. So the puzzle stays the same, but any squares you've unblocked will become blocked just again. Wipe. So you just yeah. need so essentially you just have to brute force your way through it. Yep. Which is what I did the, yeah. the second time because I messed it up the first time and had to replay the whole thing. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Cameron, you've not written anything. Is it because you hate everyone and don't want them to play games? I I was really trying to think of something I would recommend, but I'm going to recommend Watch Dogs 2 at 80% off for 19 dollars um, Great game, just don't play one because I hate the music song Snake Achievement. Uh, <laughs> I went the back game. and I got the, um, the contract one and the convoy one nice recently so i've only got the drinking game See, left oh boy drink drinking game was easier than me trying to get this bloody song sneak uh, achievement song sneak's fine. the um actually did uh, you yeah. it, how much assassin's creed do you play alex uh i've never played assassin's creed okay um what so the, there, there's a little really? bit of tie in there one of the convoy missions where you have to ambush uh one guy called olivier was actually it's actually referenced in Assassin's Creed 4 it's like oh the uh, the game developer for the company that you work for is going on a trip to sh- Chicago and then you just happen to beat him <laughs> to death in, uh, in Watch Dogs okay I, was, I only did the last I think it was three criminal convoys because I'd done up to I'd done I think 15 out of 18 I think it's before I gave last, up on it I think it's usually the last one you get a text from the assassins or some mysterious order or whatever the last, yeah, the last one I got was a text, yeah, from the leader. Man, that was that was tough that that mission, but yeah. All right, uh, purchases. Alex, you said that you're not going to purchase anything. Correct. Matt is obviously not going to purchase anything. Cameron, anything for you? I really don't think so. All right, I'm considering Quest Hunter and Asterix and Obelix Three, the Crystal Mania. I may already own it, but I'm not 100% sure. You don't. I don't? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Thanks for checking. Uh, new games coming out this week. I've only highlighted the best, so for example, and uh, the best and Marvel Avengers. I apologize. Yeah, sorry, I was going to say, calm down. The, the best games and Marvel Avengers, which comes out Friday. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 HD Remastered or whatever. Like, it's just called Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, but it's like a it's is a, a remaster is it a remake it's a remaster, remake or? like it's a re- like yeah. they actually have done quite a bit of work to it yeah I don't think that uh, Papa Roach uh, Blood Brothers is one of the the tracks in it is it really nah I, I think know there's they, I, I know I they got a the, lot of the old music back but I don't think they got everything there's an, I think there's another Papa Roach song okay. Scars it might have been Scars <sighs> love Scars um, I know Superman yeah, I know Superman's in it, in it so that's the main thing yeah mm-hmm Got my life into. Oh man, I love it. It's, He's when nice. I hear that so song, I from, think of Tony Hawk. Aside from those two, we have Party Hard 2 coming out next week. Uh, perfect Traffic Simulator, because that's the only way you would get perfect traffic. Is if you simulate <laughs> for a it. simulation. <laughs> and even, yes, definitely yes. not Cameron simulating it, that's for sure. No. And uh, Educational Games for Kids, featuring US Geography. Oh wow, so that's... Um, yeah, that's capital cities of states. <laughs> I was gonna, that's going to be a 200 hour completion and we're going to have to have some serious guide work for that. We're going to need to walk through for sure. Yeah. <sighs> uh, that was... Nubs in disguise. Yeah, no, mate. Settle. I was just checking there was nothing else on the card. Were, were you in a okay, rush, buddy? Okay. Are you in a rush? Always, always. You got an audition to go to? No, I got some stuff to do. Look at your picture, you might have an audition to go to. He's going to make a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, FIFA Street server I'm not paying well enough set for is it November 30 this time I don't know <laughs> you I tell me I, I, I mean I, it's popped up <laughs> on my feed three times so who knows jeez uh, topics of discussion is your first game on Series X going to be an indie game or triple A uh, trimming ice cold milk hedges um well it depends on when you buy it I think yeah exactly um, I, I guess yeah. getting it day one it's um, I think I'll probably play something higher like it'll probably be something Yakuza or XCOM 2 mm. or something something <laughs> better maybe not triple A but not indie I think if you think if you take this out and think about okay what am I going to play that's a Series X exclusive we don't even know yet right like no, that's, that's kind of what he's right. asking, right? He's asking, he's like, oh, what, what's the new game you're going to get the achievement in? Probably the same one that I would have got on the Xbox One. Yeah. I yeah. think the yeah. first game that I'll play on the Series X is probably Halo. Yeah. Because I'm not going to get yeah. one straight okay. away. Mm-hmm. I think of, it's 20, yeah, of this stuff it's not 2022, is it? Not yet. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. 
if it's 2022 yeah. i'll probably have one and it'll be something else but i think if it's 2021 i think dean will probably buy one and i'll go and play halo with him yeah might be the same of, of stuff that's properly coming out for series x it's probably going to be an indie game like as in stuff that's mm. sort of meant to be released yeah sort of in a series x time frame you know not like no not you siri shut up uh, and that's your one per show siri. right apparently yeah. Like like uh, like I'm not going to play Valhalla probably until it's on a deep sale. Legion, Watch Dogs Legion. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm also not going to be paying seventy dollars to get the seventy US to get the cross gen version of um, Call of Duty <laughs> Black Ops Cold War. Mm-hmm. You know, which we didn't talk about, but we really should have. Yeah, whatever. Mm. It's like, anyway, it's, yeah. it's just it's normalizing that seventy dollar price point for next gen. That's yeah, the controls do. doing basically the same thing. Yeah, you get used to you. Oh, you were used to paying for it for a series for the Series X version anyway. You may as well just keep doing it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's it's almost certainly going to be an indie game for for stuff meant to be played on like a Series X. Cameron, you still with us, buddy? Um, probably play Watch Dogs Legion or Black Ops Cold War. Okay, good um, answer. No, no, no. That's all you need. So, just... so, I was gonna say, saying if there isn't an indie game that pops up, like I, I don't I fully think expect be an indie them game in the first three months. That's sort of like a no. quote unquote Series X game. Oh, you know, Red is gonna jump I... all over that. They're gonna have the Series X version of. They're gonna re-release them Series X version stacks. Oh, stacks, if stacks they stacks did, stacks. Um... If they did. I would be in heaven. <laughs> I'd be getting two thousand free game score a week. Oh boy. Jeez. Um, I was gonna say though, I I would fully expect there to be some. Surprise announcements around Game Pass on the uh, during the launch that window. Makes sense, yeah. yeah. So depending what comes straight into there, yeah. might even be a case of Cyberpunk. Oh, no. that's a good point. Yeah, it won't. It might. It won't. It, it, it might just be one that I keep. Just you know. Oh, oh. If it doesn't game, get delayed again. Yes. Well, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I thought you meant into Game Pass. No, no way. No, no, no. no, that, no, no that sorry, was, no. that was just the Game Pass. My misunderstanding. That was my bad. Oh, I. It'll either be something that comes in a Game Pass that I Actually, fully didn't expect to want to try. It could be Cyberpunk. That is a good mm, point. I will own point. Cyberpunk. Yeah. Mm. I do own Cyberpunk. Sorry. It seems like a good game to start a new generation with, too. Yeah. Matt might own it, too. We're not sure. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss it when it comes out, yeah, in September. September, isn't it? Uh, maybe. Uh, supposed to be? October? I don't know. Like, um, oh, yeah, I, I, back, yeah. it depends if it's going to give you up or let you down. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's yeah. thing, God it? damn it, Alex! Nineteenth <laughs> of November. I was yeah, way I was off. Say, it's been pushed. Yeah, yeah, it got pushed. I can't say anything, and then you bloody interrupt me. <laughs> God damn. Okay, uh, strong, TA man. sessions. So uh, there was a Reddit post that a, a <laughs> very, very angry customer um, who was very angry at TA because. Essentially, he had set... I don't know if it's a heap. They had set up the session for Halo something. Reach. Halo Reach. Reach. It was like three multiplayer achievements. Yes. Yeah. So they had set up the session. So they were the leader. Um, they'd gotten enough people. They'd set their time for the session. I don't know what it was. Two we'll hours. Just stay two hours, yeah. two hours? Okay. Two hours. Um, as the leader, and I, I think this is... I do the exact same thing whenever I run a session. As the leader... He let everyone else get the achievement first before attempting it himself. That's exactly what I do as well. I just I feel like that's the right thing to do. Um, mm. I like if other people don't do it, I don't really mind. But that's how I run my sessions when I do them. Um, he, they, unfortunately, when they attempted their achievements, one of them, but one or more of them bugged and it didn't quite work. Um, they reattempted it a few times and went over time. So they went beyond the two hours. I think it was like 10 minutes that they had mentioned. It could have potentially been longer because they might have had jaded time since. <laughs> yes. Um, and the people in the session said, sorry, mate, we're going now. And uh, he got, r- they got really upset about that. <laughs> it, is a, it is a him, by the is way. Is he? That's yes. cool. Good for him. So just to add to this... Um, in my Battlefield Hardline session last night, so there's 10, 9 people in it, someone was yep. double boxing, I was talking about this post, and I read it out 
to the the people that spoke English and they were all laughing their heads like, I have a listen to this absolute bell end. And one of the guys pops up and he goes, I was in that session. Oh, boy. And I'm like, <laughs> no. He goes, yeah, yeah I was in yeah, that session. Yeah, community's a small one. Word gets around <laughs> fast. Yes. So it turns out that the host, who mm-hmm. has, in, in this Reddit post, has made himself look like the king victim. Ding-a-ling and uh, he, uh, he's, inferred, tried to, he's tried to make him look himself like a victim yes and he's inferred that everyone left uh, after they got their achievement which is not the case so sorry Alex real quick Adelaide beat Hawthorne by what? 40 points by 40 points what who tips that oh man no one okay. tips that so that's sorry. not I mean okay sorry. wow alright um the host had to be reminded that the session started 20 minutes after the session started. Oh! Right. Yep. <laughs> Was not in the game. They stayed... Yes. Uh, everyone stayed 20 minutes over time. So, mm-hmm. everyone still got the full two hours of the session. Yep. And what they did was they waited to get the most difficult achievement last. Which, yep. apparently, Fair from enough. the three he listed in the session was the only one that he needed. Mm. Okay. So... The suggestion of the, uh, the guy that I was in the session with last night was, wouldn't you start with the most difficult one? Usually, yeah. I mean, if, if that's and, the one you need, then you start with that one and help and everyone his, get it. The title of the Reddit post is, Everyone on True Achievements is Trash. I mean, look, look, that's not necessarily well, there, incorrect, so I... but I think his yes. reasoning is, is off. The way yeah. he got to that conclusion is very much incorrect. Yes. Having said that, it's not that untrue. <laughs> uh, but the thing is... <laughs> A couple of people, two people left 20 minutes after and uh, this guy that I was in the session with stayed for an hour after the session finished, still got negative feedback. Wow. Yeah. God damn. Wow. So after I had a chat with him last night, I actually created a Reddit account and I went and posted (laughs) on this and I'm like, "Hmm, actually, I'm just going to set the record straight because here's what really happened. Not that I was in the session. And then my, my friend did the same thing as well. Or maybe he already had a Reddit uh, account. I don't know. But he went and posted in there as well. So, basically, he's set the session for two hours and wine that uh, are two hours and 20 minutes after the start time, people actually had to leave. So, I'm not sure what the wider discussion is here. Well, that he's a bell and that's pretty much the gist Well, of that's true. <laughs> um, just on what Kirby was saying, I, I'd usually put in a session that I'm running that will just go in the session joining order. Yep. It seems as reasonable mm-hmm. to go in um, any order. But if someone who runs the session is like, okay, what order are we going to go in? At that time, I'll usually put myself last. I, I won't oh, be like, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, all right, I'll go next. I, I typically yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Depends on the session for me, but like I know that Overwatch, I've just done it like whoever joins, really. Yeah. I mean, I, an order I don't run sessions often because I don't play with people that often, but like mm. things like uh, mm. when we did Uno uh, with the AH1, when I did Uno with the AH101 crew, Hawken with them, and I ran those sessions in my group, I left myself last for most of it. Just again, because that's just how I run sessions. I don't really care how, like, I don't care what other order everyone else goes in. I just usually put myself last. Um, what happens if you were to run out of time? That's that's the risk. That's like yeah, like like that's I, I, and, and attempt to make a future session with the group hmm. for whoever's missed out. Yeah, I, and usually you'll sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say that. like I'll, I'll always ask, be like, hey, look, can can people stay? Like, it's great if you can. Yeah. We'll try and do some more. But like, they're yeah. under no obligation to do so. The guy's contention yep. in the post was that even though he put two hours as a session, everyone had to stay until everyone got the achievements. No, well, it's not really. So one and, of the comments... And, and, one of the, and then he it's said, ridiculous, next time yeah. I'm just going to put the session for 10 hours and then everyone will have to stay. No one's going to sign up to a session that goes for 10 hours? Exactly what, exactly what I said. So one yeah. of the points that uh, my friend made to him on this post uh, on Reddit was... We our Battlefield Hardline session didn't just have the 25 competitive matches um, achievement there. There was, I think, 15 or so of them. And four of them were the 10,000 kills each right. achievements. Mm-hmm. So it's like, by his logic, we all would have to stay there for like a 1,000 hours straight. Yep. Yeah. 
not just all of we are working towards these things and it would be nice if we got them yeah. what were we saying Cameron? I was just going to say before like um usually how I fall into sessions too and I know that uh, there's a lot of crossover sessions that I do with Alex we usually make good friends out of those sessions mm. and end up adding some people on our friend list and it just becomes a weekly hey same time next week or wait next week's Father's Day alright we'll plan around another day but I find that most of the sessions that I've either run or been a part of especially in the last few months it's turned into something like all right, we're going to do this for the next two, three months worth of sessions because they're longer achievements. Uh, that's what we did with yeah. Kane and Lynch, which we yeah. finally finished, by the way. Um, that's Kane and Lynch to you. That's uh, Battlefield, Battlefield for me on Friday the 13th. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something slightly controversial. Um, uh, I almost always put myself first when it comes to the list. Well, um, you I mean, made I, the session. It's your prerogative. Well, that's the thing. Here's the thing. So, yeah. you ha- but, uh, and I wouldn't get upset at you for doing that if sure, I had joined sure. your session. Well, here's, mm. here's usually what happens, though, is the problem is that, like, given the nature of even... I don't want to come off sounding like a tosser. But, well, I mean, any more than I usually do, at least. I, I should clarify. Most of the time, I do sessions with people I know. That's the difference. And that's that's yeah. the difference. That's the difference, yeah. right? Is that most of the time I do sessions with with unknowns because I'm usually doing games that I have left for way too long or really, really and only three with. people own it now. Exactly. So I, I match up with whoever I can to get this stuff done. Usually, most of them are relatively gormless and have no idea what's going on or aren't organized. So I usually end up having to run a session even though I wasn't the one who created it. So just by that, I will usually, my, <laughs> usually just put myself first because I'm just like, you know what? I need to get this achievement and no one's, no one's put any planning or any sort of structure on this. So I'm going to take command. I'm going to do this first. I'm going to get the achievement. I'm going to show mm. other people how to do it. And then we'll get to the other people because realistically, I'm in there for myself. Which, you yep. know, it's like I'm, I'm in there to earn the achievement for myself. Obviously, you know, I'm not going to be the kind of person who earns the achievement and be like, oh, cool, i got to dip, you know, pull my Ethernet cable out. Um <laughs> But like <laughs> most of the time, yeah. But but like a lot. But sometimes it's like you, sometimes you just have to be like, hey, look, hmm. I need to get what I can out of this because this is going to be an absolute train wreck. Yeah. yeah. Adding on, to, adding on to that too, I find that sometimes when you're short people in a session too, I usually give the prerogative of, well, that person's coming in, spending time out of the day that for a TA yeah. session that they didn't sign up for. I'm going to do my very best to make sure they get everything that they yeah, want. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so in short, we are good boosters, he's a bad word. Except for the one that I slept through on Saturday, don't worry about that. Look, it happens. It happens. I, I, apparently, okay, okay apparently that's, a, that's another get, thing like, too. Pro, like PMs or emails about sessions and stuff coming up, because I signed, I signed up for a session once, I, a friend was I like, hey, know. you need this achievement, sign up for this session, I'm like, yep, sure. It was like six weeks in advance, I'm like, yeah, that's fine, I'll probably be fine. I happened to get called into work that day, had forgotten all about the session because it was six weeks ago that I signed up, yep. get a message from... Gets two invites from him. I'm like, that's weird. I don't usually join up in a party yep. with this person, but I, okay. And then get a message from him. Where were you? I'm like, what do you mean? For the session. I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> Luckily... Like I, it wasn't. I wasn't a required number. Like they had sure, more than enough yeah, numbers because yeah. it was Sunset Overdrive multiplayer. Right. Um. So they had enough numbers to do it, and everyone else got the achievements done. So they all gave me positive feedback. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I got. A, I got a neutral from this guy, and it, it, it was partly my fault because uh, I was set to appear offline. Uh, uh-huh. So he thought that I wasn't there yeah. over this weekend. Yeah. Um. Ah. <laughs> ah. Yes. Exactly. So uh, I, which I had forgotten about when i signed back on because i didn't check it so he yeah. thought that i just disappeared mm-hmm. but i was sitting there the whole time waiting and then mm-hmm. i just assumed that yeah. i was like oh well he just didn't send a message but he did send me one yeah. on the xbox one but i was on the 360 mm-hmm. and because message requests don't seem to come through anymore when i signed back yeah. on the xbox one finally i was like oh well that's a bit awkward um ah. i was i was gonna say adding on to this uh based off the conversation yeah. i have with Aftos, then when do you when do you leave negative feedback for a ta session almost never Almost be. never. Mm, yeah. I mean, it, it only because I never, haven't yeah. done. So I've I've heard from people. Oh, well, Aftos was saying um, essentially negatives are for no shows or really, really, really terrible. Like they yeah. actively inhibit mm. the boost. Yeah. Um, yeah. Neutrals are for, for people that. Too. Neutrals are for people that like just don't really help out, um, yeah. and good is for everyone else. 
pretty much. positive, sorry. Uh, if someone doesn't turn up and they send a message and they say, yeah. you know, I had... Yeah, mm. uh, even if it's not true, a mildly legitimate I had an emergency reason, or... I'll let them. Yeah. I'll I'll give them no feedback. That's, no, usually that's what, what I do too. Yeah. Yeah. But if they do it again, it's a neutral feedback. Yeah, and yeah. if they were to do it a third time, you wouldn't be which I've them never happened. Place. But it, it would be a negative feedback at that point. Yeah, negative yeah. would be for someone that got their achievement and left. Yep, that's yep. a classic. That's got to be yep. another time. Mm. Um, having said that, like in your case, Kirby, if you know, we needed 10 people and they were the 11th because you set one to a reserve um, and they didn't turn up, I wouldn't leave them a negative feedback if everyone got the What if they weren't the reserve and they didn't show up, but then you had the reserve come in and it was fine? No, no I mean, like, when you... I usually just When you have 10 thing. people you yeah, need for yeah. the achievement and you set 11 spots, not the 11th spot is a reserve. Like, 11th okay, spot yeah. is a participant, but as they're long technically as you can get the reserve, achievement, I which some people yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. With I, the reserve I was system fully expecting negatives and I was like hey, yeah I deserve it because I didn't show up and I literally sent no messages about it so like I was yeah. expecting it but I got positives because they got, all got their achievements I'm like okay that's perfectly yeah, fine with me that's too lucky. Like, yeah. that's lucky yeah that's lucky I generally don't um, do enough sessions but I'm 18 sessions and I have 200 positives <laughs> it was funny when you put Jeez. that picture in discord <laughs> I was like oh okay when you get to as many sessions, like if you've still got one hundred percent, I'll be impressed. Yeah, I'm ninety nine point seven three. I've got one neutral, one negative, and I, I'm, I, same as you, I got called into work and I forgot to quit that session. Yeah, I've got one neutral. Um, I was going to say the only the only reason that I will absolutely leave a negative um, is like basically the mentality of okay, I've created the session, you have joined, you get me the achievement mm, now. Yeah, I'm not going to do any of the any of the work I have not followed any of the guides I've not it's your prerogative now you guys want it as well you show me how you just get it yeah I'm with you just like cockiness oh if someone was like hang on a minute let me just download the game yeah (laughs) (laughs) props negative oh mate have you got the DLC wow (laughs) although last night in in the hardline session we had 10 people in the session one of them didn't turn up and one of the guys mentioned that he had a second Xbox in the posts and he didn't yeah. turn it on and connect it because we had, you know... A, yeah, yeah. Uh, 24 hours yeah. before, we had 11 people. Right. So you were, you were good. So he ended up turning the his Xbox on and he got an update for 2 gig and it took a little while to download. So we actually mm-hmm. started 45 minutes into the session for this hard line. Yeah. But he literally saved the session. Yeah. i I, I got to say, in the, in the past, um, not so much TA sessions, but debt free it seems that when I was part of the Insider program, my console would always update on the Thursday night just as we were starting that session. Right, so you, you can't be boosting Absolute with Absolute worst. Insider, yeah. I want to say also, in my, my 200 positives from my 18 sessions, 157 come from two games. Wow. Two, two sessions, two games. Jeez. It was a Gems of War session to get the guild achievement. So it's basically just people joining a guild and dropping out. Yeah. And then get it, it was for like for finishing all the guild quests in a week or whatever. <laughs> so it was just a ton of people joining a guild and leaving. Jesus. And um, Project Spark. Oh, Project the Spark. Yeah, hundred yeah. upvotes or whatever. I had a, that was the first session I ever joined, and it was one I didn't have to interact with anyone. It was great. I've got. <laughs> oh nine... God, planting was in that one. Yeah. Wow. I got nine hundred and seventy-eight positive from three twenty-eight sessions. We did a session together, Alex. Uh, Have we? Yeah, we did uh, Far Cry Four. Oh yeah, we did too. Yeah, for the yeah the multiplayer achievements, that was good. Actually, I know a lot of people in this first Project Spark. Jeez, this was back when I didn't know anyone, and now I'm like, oh wow, that's cool. I have got ninety eight ninety nine point one eight percent, one hundred ninety one positive, one one neutral from ninety nine sessions. <laughs> Mr. Grandstaff was in that session. <laughs> Where are you now, buddy? No, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. Let's um do we want to do we want to wrap things up and yeah. Do we want to save the other two yeah, questions so. for next yes, week? Yes, we have two. I reckon that was a really good discussion. Yeah, yeah. So thank you we guys. We do have two more questions. Yes. As we said, we'll save them for next week because this is running a bit long and Brad's got to go to bed soon, so we just don't want to keep him up. Um <laughs> also though, uh before we move on from that, I just want to say yes. Yeah, feel free to keep on asking those questions in the Discord yeah. so we can shamelessly take them and use them for content on the podcast. Yes, we'll make a channel in the Discord for podcast questions. Like, 
where you can put oh, it'll, and I'm gonna I will be deleting things that are not questions or, or like discussion topics um, because I want it specifically to be podcast questions so that we can easily find them and take them and use them yeah and it'll probably be empty for a long time but throw questions in there throw discussion topics we'll use them but like don't have discussions in there please because like have it somewhere Ma- else we'll make we'll make two different channels we'll make a no, you, no they, no, they can just chat and chat they have chat and yeah, or chat and chat yeah it's yeah. fine don't have okay. to you don't have to discuss it in the please leave questions for us section yeah that's fine <laughs> I'm even going to put slow mode on it so you can only post once a week. <laughs> um, quickly, we'll move through questions. milestones. There's not very many of them. Uh, in achievements, one we have LA Jester with six thousand. I'm sorry, what was Chugs- that? The XLAX. some British guy. Okay, sorry. XLX just are um, yeah six thousand achievements. One Chugsy Bear with ten thousand and Shadowless Edge with fifteen thousand. Uh, in the game score category, we have Chugsy Bear, 300,000. Keith, 271179. Wonder when you were born. Uh, 400,000 gamer score. Not what yet, the apparently. fuck? Game share partner of famous, famous Australian. Uh, 500,000 gamer score. And myself, hit a million. Um, felt dead inside for a bit. Feel a little bit better now. Now that we've moved past it. Uh, completion would, 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 percentage. Would you say you can't wake up? No, possibly... Uh, just do it when September ends, I guess. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm, geez. Last yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruined that for you, didn't I, <laughs> yeah. Matt? No, you Suck did. It. Well done. That's fine. I, I should have seen that coming. Yeah. <laughs> and it works because it's the first. <laughs> uh, incompletion percentage. Nibirios has reached a new milestone of 95%. 95 actual percent, Alex. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. That's impressive. Mm. What's yeah. your percent? What's your game score? What's your uh, <laughs> ratio? All right, pretty so low because of after I got that first sixteen ratio, oh, that's sixteen. Last night, it's it's a thirteen now, so suck it. Point oh one. And that's, that's, that's you, episode one hundred and six. Right. <laughs> Thanks you. for joining I'm us. Just, I'm just, I'm just saying, if we, we, we're gonna, gonna start getting the measuring tapes out. Yeah. All right. Jeez. I'm gonna catch Matt's up your these EPs. Fast, so you get it. You will. Yes. Um, if you want to contact us and send questions, and you don't aren't in the Discord, for example. Uh, hello at realgamescore.com is our email send emails through just like Isaac be like Isaac uh, contact us on Twitter and I say us I mean Cameron although I will get no. the messages as well because I hate myself uh, at Real Gamer Score. join the Discord to ask us questions live and in person discord.io slash realgamerscore uh, or fund us on the Patreon patreon.com slash realgamerscore uh, we appreciate all the patrons and everything you do for us it's uh yeah Keeps the show running, keeps the lights on, keeps my OnlyFans account open. It's much easier to pay for that now that they've reduced the pay per view uh, limits. <laughs> yeah, no, there. Um, there's. We didn't cover that in the news, but um, yeah, there's, no. there's there's a lot going on on that world. It's a uh, oh dish. Thanks, Bella. We will discuss. One this celebrity stuff. makes everybody angry, like usual. No, it's it's. No, but again, not. We'll discuss this later, off, off air. Yeah, this is a, um, our text because I have a lot to say. Um, if you want to help the podcast out, you can subscribe to us on whatever platform you're listening to: uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Apple Podbeans, all that good stuff. Leave a review um, that bumps us up in the algorithms, and it's all about the algorithms. That's all that matters. Uh, also, what's important is telling your friends. Join your boosting sessions and say. Hey, have you heard of the Real Game Score podcast? Well, now you have. Have you heard the good word? Pr- proceed to play the latest episode the entire time. You may get some neutrals or some negatives, but it was worth it. I mean, if, if you if you invite me to the oh. party and I'm online, then I might do a, a, a live rendition of the song of the week. Yeah. yeah. Or you get asked what the best episode is and then just like... Okay, no, 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 no. Blank. You didn't ask what's the best episode. <laughs> What's the best episode What's for a it? new listener? I went, I, yeah. I don't really know. Episode because... 100? <laughs> no, but I wouldn't even say episode no, 100. There's so many man. inside jokes. Yeah, yeah, so many... Top, top tier. <laughs> the, you know, that's actually a pretty good one. I said start of season two. Start of season two is probably a good kickoff point. Yeah, we sort of reintroduce things. That's that's for, for a new listener, 
start of season two is good, which is like episode fifty one or fifty or something around that. Yeah. Um, I basically said if you want to listen to the old world, go before. In fact, fifty three is probably. Yeah. <laughs> Any anything relating to like the current pandemic? Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Eddie Eddie two onwards. We were blissfully. If you want to find out about the before times. <laughs> um. What's a good gamer score? Doesn't matter when the world's on fire. Okay, uh, Camerons, since you're already talking, how can we contact you? You can't, I'll be sleeping okay. every day, Alex, all day. Alex, how do we contact you? I'll actually be sleeping a lot as well now that you mention it. Alright, Matt, how do we contact you? I'm already asleep. Okay, and you can wake me up when September ends. That was episode 106. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.